our May 3rd uh, commission meeting. Um, this is our first one in about a year in person, and I'm glad to not be staring at a computer. This, I haven't looked forward to the last 10 meetings, and I've kind of looked forward to this one a little bit. Um, but anyway, welcome everybody. I've got my phone on airplane mode, so please turn your ringer off. I don't know how to turn my ringer off, so I'm using airplane mode right now. Um, the first item on the agenda is the minutes from the March 1st, 2021 meeting. Are there any changes that need to be made to those minutes? If not, I will entertain a motion. So motion. Well, Mr. Chairman, there is a minor uh, revision. On the Mayfield subdivision case, it lists David Deal as surveyor with Dewberry. Okay. It should read um, S.E. Civil. Okay. Just a minor change. With that change? Um, with the change, so moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. All right, next item on the agenda is uh, the April 5th meetings, 2021. Um, like to uh, see if there are any changes that need to be made on that. If not, I will accept a motion. Make a motion we approve as presented. We've got a motion to approve as presented. Do I have a second? Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. All right, motion passes unanimously. Um, we've got a pretty big group here. What, what are y'all for the most part here for? Which item on the agenda? The last one. Okay. Last one, that's what I was thinking. Um, if you're here for ZK2109, uh, excuse me, um, Baytown Pud. If you're here for the Bay Baytown Pud, please raise your hand. Um, all right. Are the uh, developers here for the Baytown Pud? Y'all are represented. Do you mind, since uh, I know that we're not meeting with the COVID restrictions anymore, but since we have so many people here, just to lower the time of the chances, do y'all mind um, if I move that to the first of the agenda, just to kind of lower the numbers out and save a lot of time for everybody? All right. In that case, is that okay with you, staff? Yes, I'm sorry I surprised that on you. Uh, just because of the numbers here, uh, so we won't be breathing each other's air quite as much, we're going to move ZC2108 Baytown PUD to the first item on the agenda. Okay. You'll have to bear with me getting through. Sorry about the last minute on that. But. My screen's not really oh, On the top, the far left button is the far left button. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, this is a conditional annexation PED, which is plan unit development for 162 lot townhome development. Uh, it is CZ 21.08, known as Baytown PED. Uh, this is 16.56 acres. The applicant is seeking to uh, a development with town, 162 townhomes uh, for a property density of 9.78 units per acre. The property is currently located outside the Fairhope corporate limits and in the, within the unzoned the Fairhope PTJ. The subject property is surrounded by a mix of zoned and unzoned property, um, including R2, uh, churches, uh, single family residential, both R1 and unzoned and R2 and R4 to the east. Uh, Auburn Extension lies just to the north of the property. As you can see here, our zoning map is on the left, an area of the property on the right, currently used as a single family home. The proposed site plan is on the screen now uh, that shows each of the, the townhome units would be an individual lot. So those are organized around a central private drive, 40 foot wide private drive, uh, with two entrances, one on Dyer and one on Bishop. And this is the southwest corner of Dyer Road and Bishop Road. The land use um, would provide uh, 4.67 total acres of green space, which is 28% of the development. Uh, require which exceeds the requirement. 
pedestrian circulation is shown in red with sidewalks on Dyer Road and Bishop Road within, within the private, uh, adjacent to the edge of the, of the private drive and also around the lake and internally through the open space. The landscape plan as proposed is on the screen at this time. I'm gonna move on through this one. Uh, some of the staff comments. We do have within our zoning ordinance R3TH, which is um, guidelines for townhomes. And there's a comparison at the top right uh, lot area where we require 2,400 square feet. This is 1,400. Where we require a 24 foot, 24 foot wide lot, if you will. And there, of course, there's zero lot line. Uh, the, the proposal is 20 foot. Front, back, front setbacks are the same at 20 foot. The rear setback is required in our R3TH is 35 foot. They're proposing a rear setback of zero feet. Maximum lot coverage, or we, we recommend 45%, they're proposing 70%. So just some of the differences there. Uh, we also require our uh, rear loaded parking uh, and rear yards provided for each lot. The density as proposed is, as I said before, is 9.78. We have a standard method for um, an, what we've heard many times in explanations on the density analysis. I won't get into that, but the appropriate number we came up with was 5.2 units per acre. Uh, the, this is a PUD, so there are architectural plans uh, provided. The townhome section of our zoning ordinance requires uh, uh, anything above four units have some undulations in the facade of the building, so it's not a flat wall. They have met that requirement on the front. The rear, if, as you can see in the elevation details, is, does not provide uh, those details. So when we're looking at, you know, while the street might have that, that facade, we're looking at the open space, you know, that, that's a pretty drab, you know, we're, we're, I'm subjective there, it's my opinion, but it is a PUD. It's a pretty drab outlook when uh, I think the interior uh, green space is 50 something units and all of those look the same with a five by 12 patio um, with, with no screening or anything uh, to, uh, to connect to the green space. You know, that, that comes into play on the uh, property lines. There's the patio and then within 20 feet, sometimes less as currently shown, is um, property lines without fencing provided or anything to screen those. So, you know, from here to the wall, there's the neighbor's property when you came up, come out. Um, we don't have graphics within our zoning ordinance, but I did find one online, and I think this kind of represents what we were looking for with, with R3TH and, and what a PUD would allow with some of those tightening up the, you know, maybe it's not, each rear yard is not 400 square feet. You can see some of these shown you know, it's kind of where the purple trees are, if you will. That's the rear yards. Those are connected with, uh, with trails, walkways, connecting to the green space. So it, each, each unit does have a private drive. You know, 162 units and nobody can grow tomatoes <laughs> or, or some little garden. That's, that's kind of a, you know, I understand the, the walking, walking out into the shared green space, but with people living here, um, the, the thought that we have, I think guidelines that we, we do have in R3TH, um, we have clear directions and clear guidance um, on what we're looking for. So with that said, staff has recommended uh, denial of the P PUD as proposed. I just wanna remind everyone that this is a requested zoning change and as such, this is a planning commission recommendation to the city council who will have the final authority. Um, one note that goes for, I'm sorry, for uh, one thing we did, we usually handle at the front end, it does not apply to this case, but Chairman, before I forget, we do not have, we have over 30 days, so any preliminary plats or things like that, we cannot table, but. Thank you very much, Hunter. Any questions for staff at this time? All right, thank you, Hunter. Um, I would like to uh, 
re say what Hunter just said, just for the audience. Um, this is a zoning. A zoning is actually an ordinance. So um, our, our we will simply make a recommendation. Jimmy Conyers, our city councilman, is the only person whose vote is going to matter. The rest of us will simply make a recommendation to the city council that will ultimately decide whether or not to make this zoning change. If this is a change, then the the developer, you know, would come back later with the subdivision. If you notice on the agenda today, we have a subdivision request for a PUD that we approved about two months ago. And so we won't get into today any kind of drainage, water runoff, or anything like that. This is basically a conceptual uh, view. Um, won't get into traffic, ingress, egress, or drainage, because that would then come back later under a subdivision. This is more, you know, how does this look from 30,000 feet? And this would become a zoning, uh, just like a property being zoned residential or commercial or industrial. So that's kind of our purview today. So what will happen is I'll let the developer come up and make a uh, presentation here in a moment, and then I'll open the public hearing. And uh, any questions that you have, I'll write the questions down, and we'll get the developer or the city, whoever is the appropriate person to answer whatever questions you have, to answer those questions. Uh, and then I'll turn the meeting over to the commissioners who will then at that time uh, vote to make a recommendation. So at that time, uh, would somebody like to make a presentation on behalf of the developer? Thank you. Good evening, David Deal with uh, SE Civil. Uh, the reason that we decided to go with a planned unit development is this is really not a traditional townhome development. It's a specific product uh, that sells very well. And um, so using that product, we were trying to come up with a site plan that uh, was in the spirit of the PUD regulations, which is innovative and, and good use of open space. Um, having personally rented a townhome here in Fairhope for a little over a year, I have some personal experience that I tried to apply here. Number one, I did not like people walking behind my townhome with their dogs especially. Um, and I also didn't like the townhomes butting right up to each other in the example that uh, was on the screen a minute ago. If you notice a lot of those townhomes, you come out the back door, you're looking at the side of another townhome or something like that. So we tried to have all the perimeter ones, you know, backing up with nothing behind them in the interior. That's where we tried to put a lot of the open space. So when you walk out the back door, you're not 25, 30 feet from another townhome. Um, in keeping with that thinking, um, instead of putting personal rear yards behind each thing that people would fence off and, you know, with a, a variety of different things back there, we're limiting that so that the open space remains open space. There is a nice five-foot sidewalk through there in that area uh, so that it can be used as a, uh, a common area and walking dogs and such and we do have a dog park down in the southeast corner um, some of the other comments that we got from staff um, for example buffering um, we do have trees planted every 30 feet around the perimeter on the south end of the property and on the west end of the property, there's already existing trees and vegetation. So we're adding to that with trees every 30 feet. I talked to the developer for the meeting. There are some areas along the west side where the existing house is on Dyer, and there's another area on the east side. And he's agreed that we can add some understory trees between those to, to uh, improve that buffer. Um, there are a mixture of uses in the area. Uh, there's some lower density single family, uh, obviously the Auburn Extension property, uh, but there are a number of multifamily uses in the area. Some of them as high as 20 units per acre. Um, so I understand the staff's uh, calculation for the density analysis. Um, I did provide another density analysis it wasn't meant to supersede what they did obviously that's their standard analysis 
but it was more to compare this development with comparable developments in the area. Um, like I said, there's the uh, Arbor Gates, Palladian, Manic, uh, Graceway. Those range from six units per acre to 20 units per acre with an average of about 11 units per acre. So we're not inserting a foreign use in this area. Directly east of us in the Meadowbrook development, those, uh, you wouldn't note it, notice it probably by looking at the aerial, but those are fourplexes that were built a while ago. Um, so like I said, we're not inserting a foreign use into the area. Um, we do feel like we did a good job with the green space. Um, we have a huge lake that'll be along Dyer Road with a um, sidewalk around it and uh, nice landscaping so that as you drive down Dyer, you're not looking at the back of a bunch of townhomes. You're looking at a nice lake. Um, along the south end, like I said, there's existing vegetation backing up to some unzoned properties there. Um, that a lot of them are already currently, at least on the on the street south of us on Gafer, they are being used for uh, business. But we will have a buffer there. Um, I think that's about it. Um, we do feel like we meet the spirit of the plan unit development with our open space and. We tried not to just line up a bunch of townhomes and back them up to each other. We tried to have everything backing up to open space. So with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. I have one question. I was using my calculator on the density calculation. What was it you just said about some of the units being business? Um, some of the uses south of us? Yes. Oh, some of the south uses. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There's a, attorney's offices and right, stuff right, like right. that. Yeah, sure. Okay. Right. Any questions for the developer uh, this well, time? I had a question. Go just when you, uh, you were saying that this, this is a product that has been successful, what defines, what are the characteristics? I mean, I see this whole development. What are the characteristics of the, of the product that have been successful? What do you mean? Just elaborate on that a little bit. Well, there's a, there's a large need, uh, desire in the market for this type of residence, people who want a nice space to live in with a within a community where the uh, HOA takes care of basically all the yards and so just if like they, townhomes with, with common properties right. what you mean okay right right and and I noticed I'm, when I lived in those townhomes the the main thing people like to do was walk everybody walked constantly all the time so we have sidewalks and trails throughout who is the tar target demographic or demographics for this? It, it's not really targeted. It could be any age. I mean, what they found um, in a lot of them, it, it is older people, but it's not specifically targeted for that. I mean, the reason I ask is, you know, my, my you know, main concern about it, and I just want to ask you right now so you can, you know, defend it. My main concern is, you know, where are the cars going to go? Are they going to be parked all over the sidewalk and all over the streets? Because a lot of the subdivisions around here that we've approved with this kind of, you know, shape with the 12-foot, you know, width and, you know, one car garage, basically it's like the garage is used for storage and then you've got one car in the parking lot and one either double parking it across the sidewalk or out in the street and... And that was just kind of a concern that I have. If, what have y'all contemplated for where people are going to put the cars on this? Um, well, we did provide the the parking spaces. Um, the um, I mean, will two cars be able to park on this? I mean, if the two cars will be able to park if one's parked in the garage. Yeah. Okay. The one will be behind it, or yes. Just one other question. Just um, I'm really struck with the difference between the front and the back facades. And I mean, I, I hear what you're saying about the open space, but I'm I'm struggling with an open space that looks out at those back facades. And did did excuse me, ever Rebecca? Would yes? you pull your microphone down to you, please? There you are. Okay. Sorry. 
Um, I'm struck by the difference between the front facade and the, and the rear facade and the lack of differentiation. And if you're in a, a, an open space bound by all of those blank rear facades, it does seem very stark um, and like it takes away from the open space. But the question is just, did you ever, did they ever contemplate a more differentiation, more detail on the back of the building? Because it seems like that and maybe it's, you know, a covered porch or something, you know, would make a huge difference. Right, right. Um, that's the plan that they provided. I mean, I can certainly pass that along. Okay. Any further questions? Any further questions? All right, thank you, David. All right, at this time, I'll go ahead and open the public hearing. Um, if, if everybody could try, I know that y'all have one representative that wants to you know, speak, but after that, if y'all could try to keep it to three minutes or less, a person would be great. And I'll go ahead and open the public hearing. When you come up, please state your name and your address. And if you are a representative of a property owners association or something like that, um, you know, just please let us know that as well for our I, meeting. I think, it, I think it's important for everybody to understand if you've never been to one of these where there are a lot of people and folks have got, in the, uh, got, got an attitude about what it is they, they are in favor of or they're opposed to, that everyone, that's a great thing, one of the great things about America, we all have the ability to, to ask for whatever and to be heard. So uh, this is, uh, that's what this is about. So these people that have brought this application to us, they have the right to be heard. So just understand that. And one day when you come, you'll have the same opportunity. Good evening. My name is Smith Prestwood. I live at 17 South Rolling Oaks Drive. Um, I'm going to let Jason Roberts talk first, but we brought some photographs that I would like to hand to each of you if that's okay. Sure. And um, everybody, we don't want to waste any of your time. We're going to try to keep everybody short, but if you will, maybe give Jason a couple extra minutes. He's kind of the big picture guy for us. Okay. So, sure. And I believe everybody has a copy of the petition. Is that correct that we submitted? Okay. Thanks. I think he's big enough that he can get extra minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Um, my first time to speak in a, in a setting like this, so thank you. Uh, I'm Jason Roberts. Uh, I live at 8610 Dyer Road, at the foot of Dyer Road. Um, I grew up in Mobile, and uh, in my mid-20s moved to God's country, is what I call Baldwin County. Very proud to be here, very, very proud to be a part of, of Fairhope. And, um, and as a lot of my neighbors who I've uh, recently spent quite a bit of time with, uh, we love our city and we love the growth, uh, but we want to be good stewards with what we've been given. And we obviously have a petition and it's because of concerns, not to necessarily stop any reasonable growth or to, uh, to not um, develop or, or see things better but to be good stewards of what we, we've all been given, and I know that's what you guys are charged with, is, is to do just that. Um, I know, uh, um, Chairman, I heard you speak of a lot of the drainage issues, traffic issues, things like that would come at a later time. That's correct. So do I need to spell any of these things out that are in this petition? Uh, because that are our immediate concerns as a group and as a family here. Uh, as you see these photographs, I've taken some of these are my property, some of these are my neighbors. Um, we already have a lot of cut through traffic coming from 98 or Greeno to uh, Gay for Extension on Bishop. Uh, and there's a, already some impacts that we feel without any development per se. Now we're not against something that would be fair, but this might be a little higher impact. So how far do, would you like me to, to go in, in the, um, the details? I, I can ask the developer if they're prepared at the end you know obviously they have you know they would not have any kind of a drainage plan at this point whatsoever because things can change they're just looking for the zoning right now sure. but they probably got a few ideas and I could ask them you know if they voluntarily wanted to mention some of those but the requirements when they come back for subdivision is that the rate of flow after the development is no greater than greater than the rate of flow before the development 
for any 100-year reign or less. Sure. And we all know plans are, uh, you know, our best laid plans sometimes are, they don't stand the test of time. And we've seen this in multiple cities and multiple counties all over. And, and what I would just suggest is that, you know, be mindful of these photographs are not during hurricanes. Right. These are not during a 15 year, uh, I mean, 15 days of steady rain with water table very high. These can be in the summer. Uh, so we already have issues that we battle. And I know a lot of the neighbors have been to the city or the county for some support and some help. But we have, a, there's a lot of elderly people there that aren't. Uh, even able to be here tonight. I've been asked to speak f in, in, on their behalf as well uh, just for emergency services. So I would just, again, being a good steward of what we have and understanding the problem that we all have currently would be the most, appreciate, most appreciated by you guys. Sure. Yes, good. Go ahead. And then as far as our traffic congestion, it's unbelievable already presently. Um, and so, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of other things that the guys here might would like to say and and you've already stated that um you know these things are not really on the table to maybe to battle at this moment and again uh, as our petition states we have uh, all but two residents and are on these streets that uh are going to be affected uh that signed in in favor of of to be against of this particular uh zoning now we're not against the zoning uh, or annexation rather um, it's it's the uh, the impact we need a, a you know we would, would prefer something lower impact um, we also I have a neighbor that's uh, that shared with me uh, he's been there over 20 years and the last photograph in that packet is um, forgive me I forget the name of the street but it's the townhomes that were built on uh, Stone Street or I, I, I'm sorry I can't recall at the moment Bishop. Uh, Bishop. It's on Bishop, but it's, uh, there's some townhomes right off of Bishop, and they have a street okay. name. Um, when those were built, the impact that you're seeing began to start becoming more prevalent because it backs up to a, a property and everything's running off. And then I've been there six years at 8610 and noticed it just naturally, you know, becoming worse without any development. So, again, I will we would just like a, a hard uh, consideration and look at the any development and a lower impact would be fabulous. Okay. Is there any questions? Is there anything anybody else would like to speak? No. Yeah. Well, thank you. Okay. I appreciate it very thank much. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, please don't forget to mention your name and your address, please. Hello, thank you for your time. My name is Rose Wiles and I am an instructional coach at Fairhope East Elementary School on Bishop. I also live at 21307 Rolling Oaks Drive. I have a bachelor's in education, I have a master's in education. And I, I want to talk to you about development and its impact on our schools. Development is not the only reason for school overcrowding, but it is the most preventable. If school expansion and construction doesn't keep up with growing enrollment, student performance may decline along with the overall quality of the school experience. In 2010, sixth grade was moved from the middle school to Fairhope Intermediate to help alleviate numbers at Fairhope Middle School. We were very overcrowded. As we speak, BCBE is building a ninth grade academy to alleviate overcrowding at Fairhope High School. In 2014, the total enrollment at Fairhope High School was 1,428 students. In 2019, the student population was 1,698. That's an increase of 270 students in five years. That's a nearly 20% increase. We already have three K through six elementary schools in Fairhope. This particular development is zoned for Fairhope West, which is downtown. They were zoned on the idea that limited development would be happening in their catchment. Fairhope West is already sitting at seven classes per grade in kindergarten through third grade. It is not a small school. Development on this site could potentially add over 100 students to their enrollment. 
These are not retirement homes, they have bedrooms all upstairs. There are so many concerns I have regarding high density developments in Verhope. The environmental impact, the pressures on our infrastructure, and the stress on our appeal as a premier southern town as outlined in our comprehensive plan. They're my concerns, but I'm not an expert. However, when it comes to education, I have some expertise. If we continue with this level of unchecked growth, our excellent schools will begin to suffer and lower the, the overall appear of, appeal of their hope, which is something that none of us want to happen. If this 16 acres is developed, which I completely appreciate can and potentially will happen, please consider a drastically lower density development. That will help limit the impact on our schools. Mrs. Carol Broughton and Mrs. Julie Pierce, the principals at both of the elementary schools, they would like me to expressly convey their thoughts that single family residences at an R1 or an R2 level would really, really help control the influx of students in our schools. As Mr. Tyler has said before, we are really the victims of our own success. People move here for the schools and I would just like our schools to stay great. Thank you, I really appreciate your time. Thank you, Mrs. Wiles. Right. Anybody else wish to speak to this item? Yes, sir. Good evening. First, thank you to each one of you for what you do. So I know it's a difficult position to be in, so thank you for what you do. My name is B.J. Ehrman. I live at 21311 Rolling Oaks Drive. That is in the north uh, Rolling Oaks subdivision. Herman? I'm sorry? Last name is Herman. Ehringman. Oh. Yep. If you spell it, it's like E. Ringman. So that's how I have to tell people. I know it's difficult. E. Ringman. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh, I just want to make a few comments that are in a little bit that may add something to the conversation here. Uh, my background is in civil engineering. I actually work for the city of Daphne, employed by the city of Daphne, so I see a lot of these developments. Uh, 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 <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, but uh, I love where I live. Uh, one of the things I bring to your attention is in looking, I appreciate staff and their commentary on this development uh, I agree in most part with most of the things that they've commented on I'd like to go through just a couple quick one of the comments that uh, was made by staff is having to do with the density I think this is the biggest portion for me that's an issue because of the high density this is and I might bring to you a little bit different perspective uh, in the way that you just put a, a single use in a single place but I think if you take the perspective of already having certain uh, multifamily developments in one spot it congests things to continue to say well hey these uses are already here we'll just continue to put these here well that's not the only use that's there um, and so what you have here and it looks like from these numbers if you look at the comparable developments which staff has pointed out uh, the right uh, table is quite cherry-picked in my opinion and I think that um, they're correct in saying that they agree with uh, quite a lower density so that's the first uh, point that I wanted to kind of make. Uh, the second point has to do with parking. I can tell you, uh, at least from experience um, in public works, that these kinds of developments, if you have two parking spaces for townhomes like these, you might as well go ahead and expect that there are cars lined up on those streets. Um, and we take calls every day uh, for people complaining that we don't service their garbage. Well. <laughs> A reasoning for that is because there's vehicles in front of the garbage cans um, and so this I think if you left the parking at the very least in this design the way it is you're going to have difficulties uh, poet works wise uh, the third thing I, I just kind of wanted to mention has to do with safety and connectivity I notice uh, that their sidewalks kind of placed along the two roads Bishop and Dyer with the development but I think uh, would be naive to think that those folks who live in that development aren't going to venture out and walk in other places but there's no connectivity in either one of the rolling oaks and uh, so they will be on the roadways they will have to walk the roadways and that's going to create a safety concern for for, for me 
Uh, and the other part I just wanted to mention quickly is if you notice the layout of these uh, townhomes, um, and I'm you know, just kind of going off of what's in there, the living space is upstairs, so I don't know that you're necessarily going to be targeting anybody who's retired or uh, not going to make it upstairs to, to live. So those are the things I wanted to add to you. Again, thank you for, for doing what you do. All right, anybody else wish to speak to this item? Yes, sir. Don't worry, most of it's already been said. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be and uh, my name is Brent Wiles. I live at 21307 Rolling Oaks Drive um, in Fairhope, which is um, also in the North Rolling Oaks subdivision. Um, I guess the first thing I want to say is I want to make sure everybody knows nobody's answering the phone. <laughs> um, the phone number on the sign for the um, zoning change request, the phone number on the website for this commission says to call 990-0214 for information. Um, and I believe the, the lady that that number goes to is no longer employed with the city. And as best I can tell from the phone calls I left over a couple of weeks, nobody's answering or checking the the voicemail so hopefully we want to do something about that i did get through eventually calling just the city and getting transferred um so heads up <laughs> um and I, I had a question so i won't repeat a lot of what we've already said i obviously have concerns about um if the property's developed and the drainage impact and the environmental impact etc um, I'm pleased to hear and support the recommendation that was made to deny the approval at this time. Um, I'm not in favor of the plan that's submitted. I have concerns regarding uh, zoning the property as a PUD instead of um, an R1 or an R2. Um, I was I was interested that the uh, when y'all did the when the city did its uh, area's density analysis, they chose not to count the Auburn Extension property. Um, indicating because it's such a unique property and I do understand that um, but that being said it is a very unique property um, and that its presence contributes to the area's aesthetic uh, and is a point of attraction for many property owners so it contributes to a rural aesthetic um, in an area you might not anticipate it and um, the owners in the area would want to maintain that aesthetic so I, I would wonder if we might could consider counting part of that property when we do that analysis. Um, I also want to question the high density developments and, um, and, and how are we making sure that we're in keeping with the comprehensive plan. So when I read through it, one of the expressly stated goals of the plan is, quote, to ensure that Fairhope does not become a victim of its own success. Um, and it specifically asked the question, will that growth continue to reinforce Fairhope's qualities or dilute them? And then we know the um, vision statement is to be a premier small town in the south where growth enhances the vibrancy of the city while offering exceptional quality of life and preserving the Fairhope identity. So when I read the comprehensive plan, um, it indicates that in 2000 our population was 12,480 people. Um, the U.S. Census in 2020 um, indicated that we are now 23,901. So in just 20 years, we've essentially doubled our population, um, which seems like very rapid growth to me. Um, and I, I'll wrap up quickly. Um, my wife's already made some excellent points about um, concerns regarding our school system and the rapid development and the impact that has. Um, a question I think if we continue in the way we're going, we have to ask ourselves is how many high schools do we want? Um, because you know we have three K through six schools that you know that there's an endpoint that, that seems pretty obvious, um, and then how small a town are we um, if we have multiple high schools? Um, and then finally, uh, I just wanted to point out that another stated goal in the comprehensive plan is to ensure that all new development is reflective of the Fairhope physical image and appropriately connected for people, bikes, and cars. And for me, Fairhope's physical image is our quaint and busy downtown, our residential neighborhoods with primarily single family homes of many shapes and sizes. Um, it's not sprawling condo complexes 
or rows of um, identical houses packed in together. Um, so I'm concerned that we're not in keeping um, with the physical image of Fairhope. So finally, I'm not opposed to growth. I recognize that the growth is what's kept our city vibrant. That's why there's all these tasty restaurants in our relatively small downtown. Um, it's why we have a bustling downtown in so many U.S. cities only have a Walmart on the highway. So I, I recognize we need to grow and that's what keeps us vibrant. We just want to make sure, um, and I also am not opposed to someone developing their property. I recognize it's their land, they can choose to develop it. It's also part of our community and uh, we want to make sure that development contributes instead of detracts. So I appreciate y'all's time. I appreciate what y'all do. Um, and my request is that if this property is zoned, it's zoned as R1 or R2. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wiles. Uh, anybody else? Good evening. Thank you for your time. I'm Ann Taylor Blower, and I live at 21312 Rolling Oaks Drive. My husband and I, Kent, have lived there for 33 years this June, so we're not newcomers. We've seen the water increase coming down the, I'll call it, drainage area. The drainage area goes through north, I'll call it North Rolling Oaks, is dry unless we have rain. It is not a creek. It is not running water. Um, this has increased exponentially over time as other developments have come along. Rolling Oaks Lane that services four families has had its bridge washed out twice um, and two you might think well South Rolling Oaks and Dyer extended okay so there are small little subdivision roads that get a little water over them maybe two feet a little, little little water but no note that it also this area also eventually floods County Road 13 at 104 after it goes over Auburn land so we're kind of the beginning of Fly Creek uh, in our area. So I just want to emphasize those uh, points. Also, I know from traffic standpoint, I know you're not here for water and traffic tonight, but from the traffic standpoint, you have done studies of the traffic on Dyer. Uh, I call it the Dyer Road Bypass because since the road is Bishop has been opened up to the high school, the traffic has increased quite a bit. But if your traffic survey was done during the summer, or darn early when Bishop had just been opened up, I would suggest maybe another traffic survey be done. Put it there during the school year because more and more people are finding that bypass to avoid 98 and coming that way. So um, thank you for your time. I just want to emphasize those points. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Anybody else wish to speak to this item? All right, take, take just one more if that's all right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, if you'll state your name and your yeah. address, please. Yeah, I'm uh, Patrick Collins. I live at two, uh, 29 South Rolling Oaks Drive. So I live on the, uh, the other one from, I heard a lot of people talk about that live on the other side, but we're in the city of, we are in the city limits of the city of Fair Oak. We've lived there for about, I guess, about 10 years. Maybe a little bit longer. Um, my wife and I, my kids, raised my kids there. But a lot of what people have talked about, I'm not going to be repetitive. Really. It touches on a lot of things like the comprehensive plan. Stay consistent with that. I just um, pulled this statute. It's just a general thing. Uh, it is straight out of uh, straight out of the Alabama Code. Thank you. Um, but it just says, you know, the, the whole purpose of zoning regulations is to, as it says here, and I even highlighted a couple of it. You know, lessen congestion in the streets. You know, prevent overcrowding of land to avoid undue concentration of population. Uh, meet other public requirements, which I think would include uh, stormwater runoff. And, uh, you know, conserving the value of buildings and encouraging the most appropriate use of land throughout such municipality. So, I'm going to tell you, I have sat in your seat. I served four years on the 
planning commission in, in Daphne about 20 years, I think actually more than 20 years ago. Um, that ages me a little bit. I think I was 10 when I served there, so I'm about 30 now. So if I do the math, but um, but seriously, the I've sat there and understand it, and I've sat here, sat there when people come in and complain about things, and I, and I have not really been on this side of it. But I understand we're really dependent on you guys, and we appreciate what y'all do. We appreciate what the staff has done to investigate this, uh, do a very thorough job on that, and, and the recommendation of the staff. Uh, it is uh, real personal to us to people here that, that clap are because we live there and and we we like it there we do understand that the property is going to get developed we're not here saying don't ever let them put anything there but this is a little bit unreasonable and uh, I'm afraid that they are negotiating <laughs> they're saying 162 162 units so next time they can come in and say well we only want 110 uh, and it, you know as you would negotiate something like that I hope that's not the case but that is that is a lot of units in that small relatively small piece of property I want to say one other thing that in case you didn't know this it hadn't been talked about yet uh, South Rolling Oaks is I'm sure somebody's told you floods when it rains a lot the street floods literally and this is in Fairhope um, to the point where when we have a, a lot of rain some people park their cars I didn't know this but they park their cars on the at the end of the street on the other end so they can get out of there uh, when they go to work, things like that. I found out the hard way when I couldn't get out of there because the street's flooded and, and people park their cars at the other end. And this is right across the street, right right next to this piece of property. So um, it is it's pretty bad now. And uh, in the traffic, you know, somebody mentioned traffic too, but I just appreciate what y'all doing. We're just asking you to protect us in this situation, protect our investments uh, respectfully, and we hope you will consider that very seriously. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing at this time. Um, I had a lot of interesting, good comments. Um, very well prepared group. I will say one thing you know, the assumption is always that the water will be worse after a development. And a lot of times, if the water problems are upstream and you have a development downstream, they can actually improve the water issues. But again, that would come at another time. Uh, one thing to remember is that this land is not in the city limits, correct? So um, they did come with the PUD condition on annexation. Um, you know, there are a certain number of rights that people have, especially out of the city limits. Um, you know, so it's not that, you know, like you said, developments come in and we just have to look and balance this out. But um, Larry, if you want to come up, we had a couple of items. I took notes. Um, Raymond mentioned the parking and also asked, you know, why a PUD? You know, there's nothing with mixed use or anything in this other than just density. So why a PUD rather than just one of the, you know, multi-occupancy projects? And then ask about, you know, the parking aspect is, you know, what's going to happen when people have, you know, three cars, two cars. Um, Mr. Wilds asked about the connectivity and the density. And I was questioning the connectivity um, if you could explain the Ezel Lane and also, um, you know, the property to the south as far as why y'all don't have any connectivity there, um, any reasoning for that. And as far as the schools go, we don't really have a lot um, that we can do with the schools. When I went to school, Fairhope High School, we went from Weeks Bay all the way to Hurricane Crossroads about 15 miles north of Spanish Fort. Uh, but of course you can make it for about 20 minutes from that area because <laughs> uh, there's only one stoplight there. But um, but it is a concern certainly, but not that you know, we necessarily have the regulations to address. But those are the four items that I took notes on. And then of course a lot of people were very concerned about the water. I assume y'all probably done some prelim preliminary looks at that. Yeah, yes, we have. And um, I'll start off with, you know, when we first started looking at this, um, we, we did, you know, I think you had mentioned and someone else had mentioned, you know, we're in the county and we did a layout as a traditional MOP and we got somewhere in the range of 200 units. When we talked to our client, they really wanted to be in Fairhope. They can go an MOP route. But they said, you know, we, we don't want to take from Fairhope and not be in Fairhope. And so as you know, a lot of places that are in the county, they get a lot of city services, but they're not contributing. And, um, you know, we did some rough numbers and we're thinking 
that um, just on impact fees and stuff like that we're going to pay with being in Fairhope. We're looking at about a half a million that we're going to bring in just by bringing this in. I mean, as y'all are all well aware, we could go two routes. We could annex as a PUD or we can go MOP, but this is the path that they really felt strongly to be in Fairhope, and that's why we brought it to you is this. Um, drainage, yes, I've, I've designed several projects in this area, and I've um, done several downstream analysis, and that road does flood. I mean, y'all have seen the pictures. I've seen them when we had community meetings, and so every time we've looked at a development in that area, we've paid particularly close attention to that system and one of the developments um, that road is actually in, under county control where it floods and we showed the county those drainage issues this you know not our developments issue to fix we just need to make sure that we don't make it any worse and that's what we were doing but we pointed out the issue to them and I don't believe anything was done that particular development never came off the ground but um, I am familiar with it when we were doing some preliminary pond sizing to make sure the pond area we had in there was big enough. We took into those downstream issues into account and um, we are going to um, greatly reduce the amount of runoff coming from our particular piece of property. The majority of it actually comes um, off of the agricultural land, um, the um, Auburn Extension land comes across and then also obviously coming down Bishop but um, we're gonna definitely do our part to reduce it as much as we can to help any downstream issues. Um, traffic was another question that's brought up. We actually have done a traffic study already. Um, as far as the primary roads, um, there are no, um, no issues there. The only issue is 98 and um, Dyer Road. Um, that does recommend a left turn lane that we would be implementing when we came in for the MOP portion of it. Um, and so uh, when we come in with the design, so there would be a left turn lane um, on, on Dyer Road heading south on 98. Um, parking, um, you know, there are two parking spaces shown. I understand exactly what y'all are saying and we'll go back to our clients and we'll, we'll see what we can do. Uh, what I'm leading to is we're gonna ask y'all, y'all table this so we can take some of y'all's recommendations and um, we're going to look at the rear elevations, see what we can do there, and come back to y'all next month with trying to address a couple of these items. Um, was there a point I missed? Interconnectivity, these are private roads, and so um, with that, we don't need to connect on to public. Um, these won't be dedicated right of ways. Question, Larry? Yes. You've already had a traffic study done? Correct. When was it done? Uh, about a month ago and and it said there was I mean there was no signalization needed at Dyer and 98 nor on Bishop at Gayfer Avenue extension I correct. mean Gayfer Avenue correct really <laughs> correct if these flying cars or these uh, right I, 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 I will tell you you'll, you will I spend a lot of time on Dyer, mm -hmm. and, and, and there are times that in, even late at night, mm -hmm. instead of going on Dyer out to 98, mm -hmm. I have to go back around either to Bishop or that little one-lane uh, street that goes by a little uh, 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 Terry to Ferry nursery yeah. Yeah. to get to the light at, mm -hmm. at Gaffer and, and 98 to be able to get across mm -hmm. there. You can't turn left on Dyer it, it almost at any time without getting up on the getting up on in the median on the on the divider. Anyway, my point is is that I, I, you can have a hard time convincing me that there's not something major got to yeah. be have to be done there for and, any kind of a and a, a, a more dense development here. Okay. Well, I'm I'm sure the city staff will and when we get to that point we'll review that. And I know study. that's not, yeah. and certainly I know that's not, it, it's not necessary at this, uh, at this state, time with yeah. a zoning issue. But well, what, what is the uh, water issue to the, to the, that Rolling Hills area there? I've seen it flooded the, before. The, the biggest issue is the culverts underneath them are really small. There's a bunch of them, but they're small and it just builds up too quickly and it overtops the road on very, very small rain events. It doesn't take a hundred year storm to do it. It doesn't take 50 year from, 
it's been a while since I looked at the numbers, but it happens more frequently than it should. So and the that, water goes from y'all to them to Auburn? Uh, no, we don't. We go. It goes from us underneath um, Bishop and then down to that um, roll that those that low point in the road. So, so ours doesn't. It goes through. It goes through that. Now, I've been there. Yeah. I think I was there when these pictures were taken. Actually, I, I've it driven happens out. more often than not. But yeah. I've driven out there on some. Th heavy that goes and on to Auburn and into that big swale that eventually goes under 13, mm -hmm. then has to go under 104, only to come back under 13 again. Yes. Uh, yeah, and and you're right, and you're right, exactly right. The culverts, they yeah. need that whole thing needs to be jerked out and yeah. have a half decent bridge put on those two lanes. And, and the, the road center line elevation needs to be um, raised up. That's, That's right. too low. I agree with that. So, thank you. I just care. So but it, it's a county right. road. Okay. So you, you request that we hold this over to the next month? Yes, please. All right. Um, do we need a motion on that, Hunter, or since it's his request? Okay. Um, I, I think this I think this would be it. having this many people be a, be a good time if you've got any comments about the future and our development in Fairhope it would I mean there have been some issues that have been raised it seemed like a good time to kind of I don't want to have open debate but just kind of make a couple obvious obvious things and I and, and if y'all would just let me have just a minute the thing that I think is important to remember and for all of you that have been there for an extended period of time or been here in Fairhope doesn't take a rocket scientist to remember 2006 and 2007. Everybody remember the big bubble? The big bubble? Yeah, I remember it. And then it crashed like crazy too. But it's happened again, only now it's closer. And what typically happens in any kind of an economic program like that is the peaks get higher and the troughs get lower and the cycles get closer together. 2006 and 2007 was only 13, 14 years ago. Now, that's no time, it's a blink of an eye. The thing I think that's important to understand about Fairhope in looking at it for as many years as I've been here and for, for a lot of us that have been here forever is the fact that yes, it's growing. And, and what, was this, what was the comment somebody made? You don't want to be so successful that you earn your success or whatever it was. I don't remember how it was, but it's right. So we've got a community that, if, that many, many people want to come to. But what ends up happening? We're there again right now. If you looked at what land prices are like, the people that are here or that we hope that it would come here, our kids, our children. My son can't live here. Well, he doesn't live here anyway, but he lives out of, out of town. But a lot of these people cannot afford. They want to be here in Fairhope, but they can't afford the kind of uh, acre or half acre lots or whatever the case may be. If you go and you look, out on 181, go into go into Daphne. Go out on 181 in Daphne. Go into Fairhope on 181. Go down 181, going uh, where, where it's already in the process of being four lane right now. Out in Old Field and all those other places. Andy told us 300 acres that that uh, Dr. Horton's got now. Look at what those kind of land prices are. Tell me who can afford that. So our 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 issue has to do with what do we do to be able to accommodate the people. Now, people want to come here. From a school perspective, I don't know anything to tell you about that. I'm, uh, it's not a matter that you can put up a fence and say you can't come here anymore. That's not going to happen. So it's, it's imperative for you as the public to have input into perhaps a new comprehensive plan that is coming fairly soon and it's coming. It's something that, that is going to, it is much needed. It's coming. It will be worked on, and your involvement should be part of that. Now, know this, though. A, a comprehensive plan is only that. It's a plan. It's a guide. It's not the law. Within the law are your zoning regulations and, and your uh, subdivision regulations. I think it's important to know, too, you look at Fairhope. In, in the city limits of Fairhope, there are massive numbers of properties not even in the city limits. Our ability, or the city council's ability, to really control those, those, those properties, very limited. This, is, this happens to be one of them. So, uh, you know, encourage your neighbors. There are a lot of them. There's some out on Fairhope Avenue, right, right uh, west, east of the school, right around the, the, uh, the, the go-round. 
Uh, there are a lot of those properties right there, not even in the city limits. There are lots of them over here uh, near where you all live that are not in the city. So they're, 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 there's involvement that, and, and there's input that you can have, and I just encourage you to, to uh, be part of it. So that's all I got. Thank you, Art. Art spent how many years on the county? Uh, I was on 16 years on the planning commission in the county. And part of that time they did a, a countywide zoning. That's his big pet pet peeve was not having countywide zoning minus sidewalks. So we'll each get on our stump. And right. Art makes a very good point. You know, we just had something called the Barnwell Historical District that, you know, got voted through that basically just states, you know, no zoning from Fairhope in the area. So just understand that, you know, a lot of people are pro zoning and, and you know, a lot of people aren't. But I've learned in my 20 years here that everybody wants zoning on their neighbor's land. We just don't want it on our own land. And uh, that's me included. Hypocrite number one. But thank you for coming. And um, Mr. Rayman and Wilds, I think when the comprehensive plan comes up, y'all had a, a, a lot of good uh, comments. So I hope y'all will volunteer. And, you know, a lot of people come out when the subdivision comes up. But really, when the subdivision regulations are looked at and the comprehensive plans are looked at, that's the time to make the you know make the decisions and let people know what you want because we pretty much have to follow those you know the rules and regulations that we have but thank you for your input what, what, and this, what, what and this will time. come back next um this will come back at our next meeting at which time we'll then vote uh to make a re recommendation for or against to the city um council we, we may or may not reopen the public hearing just based on you know what kind of changes there are on that so uh, uh, rebecca's got it i'm oh, sorry i was trying not to I, just to be fair to the, to the developer, if they're asking for time to work on it, it seems like we should air any concerns we have with with the overall yeah. development. And I had a few more and some other people might as well, but I, I'd hate to just send them off and, and then come back and we haven't said anything else that sure, might ahead. be an issue. Um, so several things. I, 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 building on what you said, um, I do see the need for density in general in Fairhope and, and affordable, more affordable housing. I think that's something where it's always going to be a struggle. Where is it appropriate and, um, and what kind of density and all this. So I'm, I'm not opposed to dense development in any way. I have a pro you know, I have a problem making an exception to allow more density um, in, I like density in areas that are served by robust existing infrastructure. So if you're gonna if you're gonna make an exception to be more dense than a, our townhome zoning allows you to be, um, it'd be nice to see that next to a whole bunch of shops or in a village or next to, you know, areas where where that density would feel a little more appropriate. So I, I you know, sort of see the wisdom of what Hunter is is saying with with that. Um, and I, I'm not quite wrapping my head around why to make, why not just do townhome development. And I, I hear you saying that uh, you don't just want to row of townhomes, and especially in this large of a site, you definitely wouldn't want just rows and rows of townhomes. But looking at the example that, um, that Hunter provided, I thought that was actually pretty good guidance for um, townhomes, but the, a, a mix of public and private spaces, you know, where you, somebody could have a place to grill or that wouldn't junk up the whole lot, you know, or a place to just sit outside and get some sun and um, or grow tomatoes or, or whatever. Um, and then there's just to, to elaborate a little bit further on the rear facades, you know, they are very visible not only from adjacent streets, but, but in, in defining the character of that open space. And um, I feel like they could use a little more attention and looking at, you know, uh, not to put too fine a point on it, but a five by 12 concrete slab is not a patio, it's a sidewalk. Um, and if only part of it's covered, then the rain is landing on that, is bouncing up against the house and eventually is rotting it out. You know, so it's just, just uh, quality outdoor spaces. We live in such a beautiful place, it's good for people to get outside. I, I, I would love to see a little more uh, attention given to that. And I understand there is always a balance between affordability and, and how much um, attention can be given but it seems like there's there's some room for improvement there i got a i got one for you too larry and david uh and this just 
straight out the barrel. I don't see anything, uh, a, a PUD is uh, intended to be used where there is something unique that is put into the development. I don't see anything unique about this. So if, uh, I guess what I would encourage you either do something unique that makes it uh, uh, reasonable for us to grant a PUD or change what you're change what you're going to do and look more to uh, the uh, townhome type of development. But I don't see where this is, uh, meets the intention of, of a plan unit development. That's my thing. And one more, one more thing. Go back on what I was just talking about a minute ago about involvement. It certainly had the ability, and I don't want to see a show of hands. I, I don't, it's water under the bridge now, but there was an attempt by this planning commission to do an overlay district on scenic 98, I mean on, uh, on 98 to four lane. 98 to four lane. All of you should have been involved in that because it directly affected the entrance to your, to your neighborhood. Now, well, maybe some of you were involved in it, but I can tell you it got deep sixed by principally the, uh, a lot of landowners on the south end of the four lane. And we didn't, we didn't have the support. So there again, get involved because that was something that had the ability to really help the future development and, and, and maintain some semblance of control over the development of, of uh, the four lane up in your area. So just, just another example. All right. Thank you. Anybody else wish to add anything else? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I want to start adding some information when, when something is tabled. Just so everyone knows, I'm um, applicant tonight. Um, we're already in a, a week into reviewing June's cases, so it, it kind of accelerates uh, the time. Being a zoning change, we won't have to look at the, the technical merits. Um, but to meet our deadlines, get packets out, get our letters out to adjacent property owners, those sort of things, we really need to have revisions uh, by the 17th. Um, and, and it can always go to the next month, but the 17th is kind of our target date, and we'll work with them in between then to... to 17th uh, of May of to May. get to June? Yes. All right. Thank you, Honor. So people in the audience, um, this may be on June, may be on July. So just keep your eyes open. Thank you, Hunter. All right, if there's nothing else to add, um, we'll go on to the next item. If you all are going to... Stay here, find them not. I'll give about two minutes for y'all to clear out. But please uh, save your talking for outside because I don't want to be here all night. <laughs> so thank you. All right, next item on the agenda is Adcock Subdivision, SD2121. And Hunter, I'll give you a minute to go ahead and get back up to the beginning of the schedule. Thanks for Joe being able to do that, that so that quick. It is. Probably take, you probably get through these in about 20 minutes, can't you? Yes. Um, I think. All right. I'm going to set records. Open public hearing, closing public hearing. All right, motion. <laughs> oh, yes. <yeah, so laughs> All in favor. 2122. Yeah. Art motion. <laughs> oh, you open, close yeah. public agenda. Yeah, we're going now. <laughs> we can't have a consent agenda, right? We'll just, yeah. We'll just put all everything there. Okay, this uh, is a two-lot minor subdivision. Uh, this is on Highway 98. Uh, there is an uh, intersection of Marianne Beach Road. Uh, the subject property is 8.9 acres, and the applicant wishes to divide the property in two separate lots. The lot one does have an existing one-story brick building and asphalt parking. Proposed lot two is approximately 3.88 acres. Eight, eight acres and is currently vacant. Property is shown on the left. Uh, this is unzoned Baldwin County uh, and within our planning jurisdiction. The aerial is to the right in the image on the on the screen. Um, this has really what kind of got uh, this one. We've been reviewing this for a, for a few months. Um, Scott Hutchinson is here with GMC. Uh, I believe Doug Bailey's who we work with most of the time um, and has uh, looking at, I think he's, he's taking another job. So we're, uh, Scott is here to fill in. 
Uh, fire protection was the issue on this. Uh, there was not a hydrant, fire hydrant around. They are installing a fire hydrant as shown on the map um, that will be approximately uh, the, the, where the split between these two lots across Highway 98. Uh, just a couple of notes. This is um, will trigger this into because it into a major subdivision. So once installed, it will have to come back for final plat. Um, the sidewalks are required in the subdivision. Staff looks at what's around, and this is one of those cases where we recommend an easement be provided, but not the the sidewalks installed. Um, so we have a couple of uh, conditions here. I think I've, I've covered most of these notes. If you have any questions, we can refer back. But staff is recommending a preliminary approval of SD 21.21 with the following conditions. An engineer will need to confirm the water pressure flow meets the International Fire Code and receive approval from the city's water and sewer superintendent prior to final plat approval. And number two, a revision of plat to include sidewalks to the utility and drainage easements where the site abuts road frontage. And just to be clear on what that is, there are already easements provided for utilities and drainage. Just adding the word sidewalk, should we ever need that, would, would be what we're recommending. Thank you, Hunter. Any questions for Hunter at this time? All right. Scott, do you have anything to add? In that case, I'll go ahead and open the public hearing. This is out on um, Highway 98. Um, in Barnwell near the Marianne Beach Road intersection, uh, turn lane. Um, <laughs> I knew where I grew up, by the way, but I've got nothing to do with it, I'll say. Uh, anybody wish to speak to this item? If not, I will go ahead and close the public hearing and turn the meeting over to commissioners. Motion, Mr. Chairman. SD 2121, Adcock Subdivision. I move that we approve subject staff recommendation. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Um, we got long-winded enough, Hunter, but at some point when everything settles down, we probably ought to change it where we can, you know, do a fire hydrant and a sidewalk easement on a minor subdivision just for y'all sanity and streamline stuff a little bit, I think. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Uh, next item on the agenda, SD 2122, public hearing to consider the request of Robert U. Harris. Um, Stephen Urbana for a preliminary plat approval for Overland subdivision. Phase one, it's a 32 lot subdivision, 15 acres at the intersection of County Road 48 and Blueberry Lane. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The, uh, this case and the, follow, the one following will be phase one and phase two. So I'll go a little bit slower in phase one and then kind of uh, speed up in phase two where there are differences. Uh, this is a follow-up to an Overland PUD that was approved. It is awaiting uh, council approval, so you'll see a condition there that any, if, if uh, the commission so chooses to uh, approve, it will be conditional that that PUD is approved by the city council. Uh, the application originally as a PUD was 61 single-family uh, lots and a 16-unit townhome uh, development. This is split, as I said, in phase one and phase two. This is phase one consisting of 32 of the 61 single family lots. The zoning map is shown on the left. This will be coming in as a conditional annexation in the PUD. So it will be a planned unit development. The area is shown on the right hand of the screen. There is a floodway coming in on the western side of the lot traveling south and uh, wetlands as you'll see on the plat um, on the western side of the the plat as well or image as well phase one uh, contains what you see on the screen and and generally this meets uh, everything that's in the PUD uh, there is a, a small issue at the very top of the the screen Applicant is showing a sidewalk on Fairhope Avenue that comes out and basically there's a large box culvert there that is adjacent to the to um, Fairhope Avenue Highway 48 and there's enough room within the right of way to install that sidewalk that would probably be the best um, for, for everyone involved however that is a Baldwin County Highway Department right of way uh, we have not heard back from them 
So uh, whether they're going to allow that, if they do not, the option will be coming into the uh, into the lot and providing an easement and crossing a wetland there that is doable. Um, so the applicant has submitted a alternate plan if that's the case and staff supports that so we don't get involved in any um, delays on that one so basically what we'll do moving forward between now and final plat hopefully the county will get back and it, with those comments um, if they so choose to approve the sidewalk within the right of way right there we move forward if not there's an alternate plan and we can clean that up at final plat the um, phase one is is again um, it's it's everything is matching within the PUD the just a point of clarification we do have within our uh, there's a the covenant state all sidewalks shall be built by each owner on their lot uh, our subdivision regulations require those right now to be built before final plat is submitted uh, and street trees so just covenants are, are not overriding our regulations that's just uh, memorializing as Buford would say I do have a red condition on here that I want to retract um, and clear up on a couple of these cases the um, when we looked at some of the plans that were included in the packet I think we got a couple of different versions there in phase two which you'll see shortly um, and it's in your packet there is a trail within the common area and a bridge crossing the wetlands um, that is as the developers requested uh, going to be installed within phase two which will be the second phase of construction and the next case and we're okay with that with that said we do have three conditions um, just to memorialize all sidewalks and street trees shall be installed prior to submittal of final plat including those sidewalk along Fairhope Avenue uh, this is does require the approval of CZ 21.01 by the City Council without substantial changes to the current proposed site plan and then uh, the highway department must uh, approve the sidewalk layout in the right-of-way along Fairhope Avenue or the depiction of an easement for the sidewalk along Fairhope Avenue at the final plat stage for sidewalks in the right-of-way so there will be an easement for the sidewalk that is installed um, and then please ignore the red condition four. Now when you say an easement, they will install the sidewalk there? Yes, sir. That will be installed. Uh, I believe that will require a bridge crossing that wetland. Um, that is not floodway there. Floodway comes in a little later, so there's another bridge in phase two that will, will uh, require no, no rise certification. Um, I don't believe this will require um, any ADM permits, but that remains to be seen. We haven't looked at that in detail. Hunter, when did we see uh, case ZC2101? January. Why has the city council not moved on that? And if the city It's our fault. Huh? It's our fault on getting those advertised. Your fault? I'll take it. I'll be ashamed of yourself. Yes, sir. Well, I'm just wondering why we're hearing a Preliminary plot approval. I guess that's what this is. Up yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, a put. Just got a little, you know, hairy with staff changes. Oh, uh, so okay. Well, that's that. fine. I don't have a problem. I just uh, would so hate to see us uh, get yeah. cart ahead of a uh, horse and in, in, in a number of these going forward. But if I mean, that's fine. I understand. Yeah. And I, yes, sir. And, and look, I understand staff changes and and issues associated with it. So I'm good. But I, I do acknowledge what you're in, and typically I would say the same thing. We won't even, we don't like to get a preliminary plat in front of you before a PUD is approved. Right. But that, we that have was some. my question. You answered the question. Thank you. Okay. Uh, why'd you change your mind on condition number four? When we looked at the plans, there was a different set of plans. The, some of the questions were answered um, in review and, and um, if you'll see on the staff report, Carla Davis has reviewed this. She's actually on vacation this week, so I'm coming in and looking at conflicting plans and, and quite literally wrote that. The staff report shows one through three, so we wrote this on the slide today as we were looking at something. So um, we're okay with the, the well, condition as, as It was we my first reaction, too. 
because it seems like one of the best amenities they have on the site and I'd hate for it to go away. But um, there is a lot of green space without it. I just was curious. Yeah, we got two right here. Looks like they're going to shotgun them. Yeah, yeah. All right. Any more questions for Hunter? Thank you, Hunter. Um, do y'all have anything to add back there in SE world? Um, just a quick update. We finally have gotten a verbal approval from the county. They are going to let us come across the culverts. Um, we will have to get back on the property after that, but um, that will keep us from having to do a pedestrian bridge right there. So um, we'll share that correspondence with you so y'all have it for your records. But um, other than that, um, we're, we're good with the conditions one through three. Thank and you, Larry. I'll answer any questions y'all have. All right, let me go ahead and open the public hearing at this time. Does anybody from the public wish to speak to this item? If not, I'll close the public hearing and turn the meeting over to the commissioners. Gentlemen, questions, concerns? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Motion. Uh, case SD2122, Overland Subdivision, Phase 1. I move that Mr. we approve Chair, sub staff recommendations. Did you close the public hearing? Yes, I did. So I've got a motion to approve subject to staff recommendations. I'll second. Um, I've got a second. Who do you want to put down on that? Let's let Rebecca go, got please. Rebecca. Ladies first. There you go, Rebecca. <laughs> All right. Um, and under further discussion, yes, Larry, under further discussion, yes, sir. I just want to make sure the staff recommendations won't be approved. That's one, correct. Two, three. Yes. Um, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, Any opposed say nay. All right, motion, motion passes unanimously. Next item is phase two of the same project. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. Um, basically, everything I said for the last one, except for this is 29 of the, the 61 single family lots. Um, little small detail here. So this is as referred to in the previous case, the trail and bridge crossing the wetlands are shown um, on the plan and on the screen here. Um, again, meets uh, meets uh, the PUD there is a condition on this one um, I believe let's get let's see on that one I believe the original plan had a condition for the street the this the um, highway department approval at least one version I don't know if that's in your packet so we will not need that um, that requirement um, okay so amending the can recommendation of approval here in red um, that should strike the first sentence in condition three otherwise I believe those conditions are the same and if you don't mind I'm gonna leave this on the screen just ask the applicant to check me on that see if they have an opportunity to uh, correct me if I'm wrong. The the sidewalk walk along Fairhope Avenue in condition one will not be installed in phase two. That will be installed in phase one. Uh, so I can amend those. We can we can uh, strike the condition should strike uh, after the comma in condition one and the first sentence in condition three. Okay. Thank you, Hunter. Um, any, do you have anything to add, Larry? Anybody from the public wish to speak to this item? If not, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing at this time. Um, Larry, just an FYI, the Single Tax Corporation has a uh, plan to uh, level out that overgrown area just uh, to the uh, west of the River Mill subdivision entrance and make that into a public park and turn it over to the city of Fairhope and connect the sidewalks, you know, from River Mill to y'all's project and then Walmart the other way. 
and they connect on the east side to uh, River Station and then try to get over to Blueberry Lane if we can get the easements and connect to those apartments at Blueberry Lane and eventually to Gaffer. Um, we had some people come and make that, you know, make a request that we do the sidewalks and then we had that lease turned back over to us because I thought we had the floodplain. Um, I thought the floodplain was further to the west than y'all, we being the single tax corporation, but that floodplain is on y'all's face too, is that correct? Okay. So I know we've got that same issue, but we're just going to open ours up. But it's a great project that y'all are doing, by the way. It's it's really a very very nice one. All right, commissioners, any questions, comments? I had a quick comment. I was just going to. I also wanted to just appreciate. Um, I like this. I like the way that you guys are treating the green space. I think um, you know. I mean, we're getting to the point in Fairhope where the only undeveloped areas are the undevelopable. <laughs> You know, or gullies and floodplains, but but not treating that as this forgotten wasteland. You know, treating it as an amenity, mm -hmm. I, I think, is a great thing. And it's you know an amenity that do provides a lot of services for us. So the more you know, we can kind of engage those areas. And it's challenging. You're having to you know get a no rise and build this bridge. But I appreciate that they're doing it. I think that'll be a really great spot. It's a great project. It really is. Um, any more questions or concerns? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Did you close the public hearing? I did. I move we approve Phase SD 21.23 Overland Subdivision Phase 2 with staff recommendation. Amended staff recommendation. Okay. I've got a motion to approve, second. subject to amended staff recommendations, and a second from Council McConyers. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. All right, next item on the agenda is Fairhope Landing, uh, public hearing for provision investments. This is a two lot minor subdivision, um, a quarter mile south of, excuse me, on Highway 181, a quarter mile south of State Highway 104. Yes, sir. Good evening, Commissioners. Mike Jeffries with the City of Fairhope. As you said, this is a minor subdivision. It's Fairhope Landing minor subdivision. Directly following this case is also an MOP application for lot one that is in this minor subdivision. Um, it's approximately 12.44 acres and I'll, I'll locate on the east side of Highway 181, approximately a quarter mile south of Highway 104. On your screen on the left side is the uh, zoning image. Uh, Hollowbrook subdivision is across, almost across the street, highlighted in yellow for the zone portion. The rest of the surrounding area is unzoned and an aerial on your right side. It's kind of a unique shaped lot. Looks like uh, you know, two little nubs there that front on Highway 181. The southern area is the portion that is being carved out as lot two, as shown on the plat. Again, that middle area is not part of this subdivision. This will essentially be a very large flag lot for lot two where the MOP will be in our next case um, the drainage nothing is changing none of the existing flow patterns the proposed subdivision there's no infrastructure improvements as with our minor subdivisions therefore a lot of the major components are not applicable to this a traffic letter letter was submitted indicating that a traffic study was not triggered uh, staff did, however, uh, require some correspondence from ALDOT indicating that they have seen plans and at the time of ALDOT permitting the access would be a restricted access. Uh, the area of 181 in this area is currently under, under construction for the widening project that the state is doing. So we wanted to ensure that this wasn't going to be any, any conflict with the proposed plans that ALDOT has for what's going on and we were pr provided that information. It does meet the approval standards of our subdivision regulations. Uh, staff recommends approval with the following condition to add a note indicating a 10 foot sidewalk easement along the front lot lines of lot one and lot two that abut State Highway 181. Uh, be happy to answer any questions on behalf of staff. And we have SC Civil with us tonight to answer questions on behalf of the applicant. Any questions for staff at this time? I got, a, uh, I got uh, just one thing. If we put a sidewalk in front of lot one and lot two who does the sidewalk in the piece that's in the middle 
Yeah, he was asking for an easement. I don't think you were asking for a sidewalk. Well, I know, but I mean, if, if they built a sidewalk in lot one, in front of lot mm -hmm. one and lot two, who builds the sidewalk to connect the two in the middle of that thing? Okay. Who's, who's responsible? Whenever somebody that? gets a building permit for that middle lot, if we were to require somebody, the sidewalks, a lot of money. if you were to require the sidewalks on either side, yeah. then that's all you would require and they wouldn't connect. And then whenever somebody would develop the middle, then they would connect. I mean, go out through Quill Creek, and you'll see numerous places where people built sidewalks in front of their houses at the time of permitting, and you still got places 20-plus years later where the sidewalks don't connect in Quill Creek and in Summer Lakes and quite a few places. So that's always well, the was question. It, was that, when that development was done, what did they require the sidewalks to be built when the, when the houses were When the houses were built, yes. Okay. We've gone back and forth because the developers hate the requirement that the sidewalks be built, um, you know, prior to final plat approval. So we did that for a while. We have done, you know, required everything to be built before final plat approval. We have required everything be built within two years before the bonds released. And the problem with that is, you know, in prior administrations, when they weren't built, you know, people didn't have the guts to go back and make the developer build them. And, and then we built them early. And then, then we've got cracked by the concrete trucks and the. So there's no there's no free lunch on it. You know, as they say, no free lunch. There's. <clears throat> but this is just asking for an easement. easement. But this, but here we're just doing an easement because at some point, hopefully, there'll be some kind of a grant that'll put sidewalks all the way down. And I don't know if it, I wonder if a ten foot easement's big enough there on this. Um, <clears throat> at some point, somebody be putting a sidewalk down Greeno, I would assume. <coughs> you know, you've got, well, I won't go into all the de details of what's coming, but that area is probably the fastest growing area in Fairhope right now as far as just pure numbers. Mm -hmm. All right, any, any further questions for, for our city staff? If not, um, I'll go ahead and see. Uh, Larry, you have anything to add on this? Um, I'll go ahead and open the public hearing at this time. This is for a two-lot subdivision um, on Highway 181, just south of 104. All right. My name is Jerry McManus, 14747 Underwood Road, Somerdale, Alabama. And I'm coming here tonight on behalf of Baldwin County Sewer Service to have our letter that was sent to you guys right. officially put on the record in the accompanying documents that supports 21-21.25 as well as 21.26 and I know that may be a little bit unusual but since this is part of the process and the conversation about who the sewer provider is for this development is still ongoing we felt that it was important to include this in the documentation for this development and to be on record as well as in the minutes Sure. And so if you guys could uh, grant that request we would appreciate it that will be fine Jerry if you'll hand that to our secretary of the day. I appreciate that, and um, we do confirm that we did get that letter. So Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Um, anybody else for the public wish to speak to this item? All right. In that case, um, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing and turn the meeting over to the commissioners. Move motion, Mr. Chairman, SD 2125, Ferro Planning. Move that we uh, approve subject to staff recommendations. I've got a motion to approve subject to staff, staff recommendations. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. All right, motion passes unanimously. Uh, next item, SD 21.26, uh, Fairhope Landing, coupling with one ahead yes sir Mike good evening again uh, this application is for a 76 unit multiple occupancy project that was lot two of the previous case on that minor subdivision uh, it's approximately 11.16 acres again located on the east side of highway 181 about a quarter mile south of 104 to be known as Fairhope Landing RV Resort the property is currently unzoned Baldwin County inside the planning jurisdiction of the city of Fairhope and as such being reviewed as a multiple occupancy project under our Fairhope subdivision regulations. This is for preliminary approval and if approved an application for final MOP approval must be submitted to close out the project to allow to record any necessary documents. Again, the same aerial on the screen depicting the lots. 
the site layout has the entrance coming in off of 181 that opens into a parking lot, clubhouse, pool area, um, little play area, and then enters into a circular, uh, circular turnstile for the RV slots that are there. Retention pond is located on the northeast corner of the site. There are sidewalks and walking trails around the development and through the center of the common area. Uh, again, a traffic study was not warranted due to the number of the average daily traffic counts uh, and the letter supplied by the engineer of record. Uh, staff required correspondence from ALDOT as well, ver verifying the allowed access for the development. ALDOT confirmed that a restricted access would be granted and after the widening of 181, a permanent access could be permitted installed. Currently, ALDOT is allowing a temporary construction, a, a construction entrance in and out and if approved and built out before the development of 181 is complete, they will have a temporary access and then once the improvements are completed at 181, they'll be able to actually apply for the permanent entrance in that same location. Uh, drainage for this was done by a third party, uh, Neil Schaefer. The review comments provided from Neil Schaefer were addressed by the applicant and determined to follow Fairhope's subdivision regulations. Um, quick overview, the water is collected in a series of inlets, underground drainage pipes and ditches, and will discharge into the proposed wet pond on the northeast corner of the property. 25% green space was required due to the density. 2.86 acres is being provided as shown in the site data table, just slightly over the required 25%. A uh, wetland report was provided verifying no wetlands or streams were located on the property. I uh, wanted to point out that any desire to subdivide or sell lots in the future will require the property brought into compliance with the regulations of the authority having jurisdiction. Uh, staff's recommendation is to approve with the following conditions, that the clubhouse, pool, and amenities be installed in conformance with the submitted landscape plans, and that the clubhouse, pool, and all amenities are installed prior to acceptance of an application for final MOP. You said you yes, had sir. a wetland plan that said there's no wetlands on this site? Yes, sir. That is What's correct. that up in the northeast corner? Look at your first, look at your first, right there. Yes, sir. You see that uh, gray area in that northeast corner? Yes, sir. That's I a drain. It's not a wet one. According to the report received by staff. Did forget that little. No, corner? sir. That's the, there was a question sometimes the validity of the reports that we get, but it's obvious what that is. Mm -hmm. If you, if I pulled it up on a bigger aerial photograph, county photograph, and the whole thing drains out across uh, the adjoining properties through a through a, an open ditch mm -hmm. um, and through that pasture. Yes, sir. But that that is what that is. That's a, just for informational purposes. And the engineer for the application may be able to answer that question. That did, is in that a, a wetland in there? Detail. Well, let's wait till he comes up. Any other questions for staff at this time? All right. Thank you, Mike. Um, all right, Larry, you're on. Hey, Larry, is that a wetland? <laughs> well, let him give his presentation first. <laughs> According to the wetland expert, it's not, but we also recognize as a drainage area. And if you um, over, uh, if you look at, if you look at the way we shaped our pond, we stayed out of that corner. I see it. Um, so. We, we recognize there is flow through there. Um, at the time of the um, wetland um, delineation, um, they tested for the normal triggers and it did not have the hydric soils and the other conditions that would normally trigger it as being a wetland. But I don't we, know we looked at the contours and saw that water was flowing through there and we didn't want that to erode our dam of our pond, so we pulled back. Yeah, I don't know, who is Neil Schaefer? Neil Schaefer didn't do the drainage um, design, they did the drainage review for the city. For for y'all. Okay. All right. It, it was kind of confusing the way it was worded, but they, they just reviewed our, our calculations. Right. Are y'all going to charge extra for lot 60 and uh, for lots, I couldn't read the numbers there, 60 and 48 and 45 and 30 where people don't have to back in? I'm sure they will. <laughs> <laughs> You have a camper? You're looking for? Just go forward. <laughs> Are you looking for the right? <laughs> I can't back up with with mirrors, so I always wonder. But I don't have a camper. I'm not a prospect. Any um, other questions? Yeah, for Larry? I was going to say I didn't have really much of a presentation um, ready for this. I mean, 
I, I think um, the staff report went over everything well enough, uh, and I'm just here if y'all have any questions or any comments. Okay. All right. Thank you. Well, in that case, I'll go ahead and open the public hearing at this time. Does anybody wish to speak to this item? And Jerry, we've got your letter, and we know that you want it for both items. Uh, in that case, I'll go ahead and close the uh, public hearing at this time and turn the meeting over to the commissioners. Anybody? Come on, guys. Step up. I was just reading the wetland, and I didn't do it while Larry was still up here, but it sounds like they just, they just looked at maps and surveys instead of a field assessment. Is that true? Sorry. No, that's fine. Um, no, they did a field assessment, and there were photos within that report of their field assessment. That, okay. that, that one you're looking at is the review from the city. No, I'm looking at Dewberry Kathy Barnett. But, um, okay. but I've just looked at a lot of stuff, so I, may, I, I had forgotten. Yeah, there, there should be some photos on an additional page um, where they did a field investigation as well. It's probably in the full length version. Okay. And, okay. and we may have purged some pages. You know, this this That's is already a huge doc. You know, document. Um, I realize, yeah. If we if we included every page, it would have been in the thousands. Well, if there is a field, that was my main question. I can see if somebody was just looking at a map, how you could miss something. I know you're staying out of it, but I feel better knowing there is a field assessment. Thank you. All right. Um, the the. Can I still go up and say something? Um. Good. Go ahead, real quick. The public hearing's been closed. I live next door here. Okay. And, um, we don't have if you'll come up and state you, your you name and your address, I shouldn't let you speak because the public hearing's been closed. But if you just have a very quick comment before we vote, you can state your name and your address. But I'm breaking the Roberts Rule of Order. That's right. Too kind. I'm just wondering about the, the traffic issue. Can you state your name when you're addressed? Andrea Cherry. Okay. 21684B, Highway 181. Um, that when I pull out onto 181, and, and it's a little bit better right now with the new, with the new road, but there's a hill that goes down to, to by Mosley, and the cars come up that hill. They're going about 60 miles an hour, and I'm driving a Prius. And if I turn right, which is the easy way, people are coming up behind me and they're upset because I'm not going 60 miles an hour within the first 20 feet of leaving my driveway and they have to slow down. And it makes, you know, people are just so impatient these days. What, what is it gonna be like when a 50 foot RV that's towing a car behind it is gonna pull out of there? And apparently, Jeff Lane, who's doing this whole thing, um, <clears throat> um, I don't know, I lost my train of thought. Um, he, he, this is going to be an overnight place. It's not going to be a place where people live. It's going to be an overnight place for eighty dollars a month. And so you're going to have that's who that's who have these is the people that are going to pay that eighty bucks a month or eighty eighty bucks a night are the people that have these huge RVs. It's not people in small RVs. It's not, and are they really, are they really gonna want to come to Fairhope for 80 bucks a night? <clears throat> and then they can't even go, they can't even park their RVs downtown because of our, our laws here. <clears throat> and my other comment is that um, RV parks, there are lots and lots of dogs for every RV that doesn't have a dog, there's another RV that has two or three or four. And granted, most people will pick the poop up from the dogs, but you're gonna have all the urine from all those dogs. It's like living next to a kennel with no sewage for the dogs. All right. So Thank you, ma'am. All right, I'll go ahead and reclose the public hearing at this time. And uh, have y'all y'all done a traffic study as far as people pulling out on 181? Um, well, first, a traffic study wasn't warranted. We went ahead and actually did prepare one. Um, I didn't share it with staff just because it wasn't warranted. Aldot sure. has seen it. Um, and, um, you know, 
that's what was dictating that we didn't need a turn lane or an acceleration lane. Okay. Um, the, you know, this development will be tied on to when there are four lanes. And so, you know, if someone can't accelerate, they'll have a lane, the people who are impatient will have a lane to go around them with. Sure. Um, so it will be a right in, right out um, develop, as we have shown on here, that's, that is the new four lane um, design that we're showing the connection onto. Um, and so all of our incoming traffic will be coming from the south and our outbound traffic will have to head north. Um, there'll be nobody trying to head south coming out of this development. There won't be a means for that. but. But yes, um, we've shared that with ALDOT, and that's how we came up with this configuration for the okay. access. Thank you. All right, commissioners, any questions, concerns? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, I've got a motion to approve subject to staff recommendations, I assume. Yes, sir. Motion to approve subject to staff recommendations. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Got a motion to second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. All right, motion passes unanimously. Turning the page. Uh, next item on the agenda, SD2127, public hearing to consider the request of Fairhope Single Tax 68V Long Branch 2019 for a preliminary plat approval for a 28 lot subdivision on 18.71 acres at the uh, Twin Beach Road between County Road 13 and Thompson Hall Road. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> uh, just a, a quick update. Long Branch is something you've all seen, I believe, if you were here two years ago, slightly over two years ago. The Long Branch subdivision on Twin, Twin Beach Road, um, between County Road 13 and Thompson Hall Road was approved by this commission on April 1st, 2019. If you recall, I believe it was last month or potentially the one the month before we kind of asked about a that this expired the week before a meeting so uh, the week after a bit before we got an application to uh, uh, extend so this is preliminary plat uh, uh, permit has not been was not pulled and in the request for an extension did not make it in in time so this is a uh, practically the same subdivision there are a couple of minor changes but uh, in all effect this is the same conversations that were had a couple of years ago so um, if you need any um, have any questions I do want to make a correction on this this uh, page it says the applicant failed to begin construction within the one-year time period that is a two-year uh, as you know between preliminary plat and final plat um, this property is, as we said, in between 13 and Thompson Hall Road on Twin Beach. It's shown on the zoning map on the left and the aerial imagery on the right. This is a 28 lot subdivision um, the, that does have wetlands uh, as shown on the plan. The uh, larger lots than we typically see, we got 15,000 square foot is the largest and the smallest is 12,195 square feet. The setbacks are 35 front and rear, 10 foot on side and 20 foot street side setback. Uh, there is a utility easement on all lot lines. On the, the um, Twin Beach side, there is wetlands and I think there was a lot of debate about installation of sidewalks. So that was not uh, installed. We're, we're supporting that same conversation. We would like to see an easement uh, there provided in case we ever do need a sidewalk on Twin Beach, uh, crossing those wetlands. So we do make that request in the conditions of approval. The, there were con concerns from citizens uh, about gopher tortoises on the property. Uh, an official letter was submitted with the new application confirming that a survey was conducted by a senior environmental scientist on January 24th, 2021 and stating there was nothing found on the site. A community meeting was held at our request just to kind of let the community know. It, it's required anyway, but um, you know, our main goal there was to let people know that this is the same subdivision that, that was approved. It's not coming back asking for more lots, smaller lots, uh, more density, those sort of things. So uh, drainage was, was approved. Uh, that, that's n nothing has changed there. The, um, 
the uh, waters there are some sewer upgrades that are changing so that is one of the the changes um, and because of our coordination with the um, the installation of wind uh, sidewalks and street trees those will need to be done for the final plat but other than that it must coordinate with Fairhope utilities and wastewater and wastewater superintendent on the sewer upgrades must receive approval from public works regarding traffic calming device that was a condition in the previous one and revise the plat to pick a sidewalk easement along the common area three where this is currently where there's co currently no sidewalk depicted so other than that staff recommends approval of this subdivision i remember a discussion what was that then it was 2019 wasn't that right it was what was the discussion about gopher tortoises I wasn't here for that one. Um, do, you, do you remember? We did read the what, what was the, What was the purpose? Because gopher tortoises are not threatened or endangered in Baldwin County. I don't, it's not in our regulations. So that, that, was the, that was the discussion. You brought it up during the meeting that they were not on the protected species list. Well, I understand, but they're not they're not threatened or endangered in Baldwin County. So what was a African wind got them. There yeah. were comments from concerned citizens that were around that. that they've dealt but with I remember that was in 2000. Point. In uh, 19, too. Mm -hmm. Yes, this, this letter from the scientist was to state that there were no burrows found okay, on site. I just didn't just get it. to clear that question. <coughs> All, right. All right. Any further questions for staff? Right. I have a question, Hunter. Um, yes, sir. I don't have any issues with the, with the subdivision or even providing an extension, but they've had two years. We haven't done anything. This extension is for another one or two years. This is a this is not an extension so okay. because it expired this is, um, a whole new application. this is a whole new application all right so, so what if we get to the end of this period and they haven't done anything they have the opportunity to extend it at the end of this yes sir okay. the and that's that's the planning commission's prerogative it, it's not a given they can ask for an extension and traditionally if if no improvements have been made if improvements have been made we almost always grant the extensions for you know one to two years if no improvements have been made you know all bets are off but generally if there aren't any major subdivision changes we we do grant the extension but if they're like major subdivision changes with something like green space or lid then generally they you know have to come back okay, i just just wanted to make sure that we don't have uh uh, a, a, a situation where we're getting um, lots of subdivisions getting approved and then you get to the wire and, and we haven't really had the opportunity to start anything so you run out there and just push a little dirt around I mean do we have a definition of what do we consider commencing construction or there, there's it's no, all just it's subject? Not, not legal at all it's yeah. just okay. you know the, the regulation basically states you know that we don't have any requirement to give an extension at all we just traditionally right. have and okay. you know um and the fallback is you don't you know the the preliminary plan expires so i you know i think that's that's the pressure in the planning commission's wheelhouse to to make that call okay. hunter what is a traffic calming device in this situation it reads that it was, it was a speed bump that was approved but okay. um it, Traffic calming devices come in a different flavors, so you'll see some in some of our subdivisions where it's actually a, a an island in the middle of the road where you'll okay. see you know, it, it where you have to slow down to go around. Um, I believe this one was specifically called out as a as a speed bump, speed table maybe. Landmines. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, and Harry, this is probably one of those things that we were discussing in a in a meeting. And details, we didn't bother with details because our public works uh, department has some specifics on what they'll look okay. at. So we'll let the developer uh, talk with our public works and work out whatever I don't they're. Think I, I don't think I've ever seen one of these in a in a plan before. Um, it's usually they're, they're actually that quite a few right. uh, historically. I, I okay. We we don't like. Uh, we try to stay away from the speed tables and speed bumps, um, so it's it's more aesthetic. You okay. can do do something, uh, but you know the, the, this was approved then and debated, and you know we, we didn't want to retract that statement. So. All right, there's there's a certain 
distance that you can have a straightaway and if you exceed that distance then you have to have a traffic calming device gotcha. like a speed bump or one of those little turn things okay now that we mentioned it you'll probably start noticing them a good bit so often you get just you get just trained by them and you go around and you never think why in yep. the world yep. is this is there a tree in the middle of the road right here yeah okay i believe you'll see one in the the next final plat is there in this section i know there's some out there all right well no battles i had a kind of a nitpicky comment but um it just i found i thought it was strange i know like many of the thing the uh cases that we've seen today there mm -hmm. i hope that the city will be diligent and the developer will be diligent with stormwater you know pollution prevention controls during construction because of the proximity to water bodies but just it i just found it strange you're looking at the the um BMPs and the salt fences are like are not continuous. There's a salt fence shown here, and then there's a gap, and there's you know drainage going aiming at that gap towards the the blue line, and the, and then there's yeah. So it, the the BMP plan seems strange. There were gaps in the salt fence, and I would expect it to be continuous because it's receiving erosion continuously. So, um, we will make a note of that and we we always have a pre-construction meeting before um, any construction begins and i will assure you that kim burmeister is out there every every time and giving uh making sure people are aware of the bmp and tree protection requirements so um, do you think it's um I, this is the one i did not drive by today i don't know how i missed this one hunter but um do you think now two years later we need to require that sidewalk to be built or are you pretty comfortable with the right of way? And we do have Thompson Hall uh, quadplexes are are you still here on the to the west of here? Uh, is it on the west of Thompson Hall? It's on Intersection. The, it's on the east side. East side of Thompson Hall. East side we do have um, Carmel Park, Park Flats on the south uh, that is approved. So I mean, Twin Beaches is going. I, I'd, I'll be honest, the, uh, you know, Carla reviewed a lot of the minutes in that previous meeting and not being here, I'm not sure exactly what that discussion was of, of why not to install that. So if, if we need, uh, we might need to do a little research on that one if you need a better answer. And I could go either way on that one. You know, that area, like you said, we've got a lot of development. It's not quite like 104, but, you know, you got a Dollar General fairly close by and areas to walk to, and it's just... Mm -hmm. And we have, have school right down the road, and, I mean, that area just tells a pop, and even though it's not 104, it's pretty fast growing there. When we have That's installed a, the sidewalk on that side of Twin Beach, basically... I believe it extends all the way along Fairfield. So that's the orange and blue shown. I believe it goes all the way to Oberg, or is it all the way to 213? Oberg, yeah. Oberg, Oberg is shown on this map, so Highway 13. So it does uh, stop there. So the, a continuation of that sidewalk would we would support. I don't know what challenges that provides. I know there was wetlands on the site, so you might want to ask the about that one. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, anybody wish to speak to this item? Uh, well, I guess the developer. Is that Dewberry? Yes. Good evening, y'all. I'm Melissa Curry with Dewberry Engineers. First time I've met you in person. Been on the phone with y'all and video. So nice to meet everybody. I'm here to answer any questions that you might have of this development. Okay. Um, I just was asking about the sidewalk in the front. I mentioned earlier my pet peeve is always sidewalks. I feel like, you know, safety issues, everybody talks about red clay, but, you know, I get concerned like when I see people, you know, dumping trash on the, you know, the bike trail down on Scenic 98 and bikes going out the road and off the road and out the road and off the road and subdivisions with cars parked over the sidewalks and seeing people push their strollers out the road and then back around onto the sidewalk. I just mm -hmm. have always been very, very pro sidewalk. Um, sure. And I was just wondering um, if this, why, if a sidewalk could be an issue on this for any particular reason. 
Um, not within the development. I mean, they'll be putting sidewalks in with each home as they get built. Are you asking specifically I'm about asking the on Twin Beach Road years? with that area where eventually, as these sidewalks start getting connected, people could walk to school, walk to the Dollar General, or right. I think the biggest challenge out. here would be because of the wetland crossing that it would require. Um, that would be a lot of permitting and and that kind of thing. Well, no, we've had them before on Fox Fox Hollow, and I can think of a lot more where we've just had them put up on the post previous uh, phase two of Overland. Yeah, as a wetland crossing. The last one we just had had a wetland crossing on it. It's not a you know that that's happens to be a trail. They did get the public sidewalk in the right of way. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, any more questions for the developer? I do want to iterate that we had the um, community meeting, made notes of concerns, and um, as Hunter has pointed out, the pre-construction meeting will happen, and, and, and a lot of those things will be discussed there as well. So. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, thank Melissa. You. Appreciate that. I thought we were make the whole night with that having to listen. Uh, I'm coming. sorry, <laughs> buddy. I really apologize. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. <laughs> John Avent with. Uh, 68 ventures uh, if hunter if you don't mind if you'll pull the topo of that site uh, more particularly on twin beach that should be the one on the lower half of the screen if, if the sidewalks required, you'll look at about one half of this property would have to be bridged over. It has the blue line, that's the water estates. That also the flow of that uh, particular area, I don't know if you've you ever seen it during flood, but it's quite wide. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, I, I, we're a developer, we got to protect our assets and the, the cost, but what we would have to do is build a pretty lengthy bridge that has a stop on our west property line and uh, you know and then stop it may is the and it, when it stops it's not going to expand the whole drainage area so you know I don't know what we're trying to accomplish I I, I get the connectivity well, eventually the be nice for kids to be able to walk to school is what we're trying to accomplish eventually Honestly. eventually there's going to be a sidewalk there you know, I don't know as much as I've been eating lately in the pandemic, maybe not in my lifetime, but, right. you know, in my kid's lifetime, you know, there'll be a sidewalk there since so he's going to eventually well, pay well, for we're just, it there. Well, we're just totally honest. We're just not prepared. We're totally not prepared to have a expense of that nature. Okay. Um, this, it, this came kind of out of left field and uh the logistics of building that and the expense of it is this it's just over it's going to be overwhelming for us it's right now it's overwhelming because of cost that right there would be a tremendous expense okay all right thank you all right um i'll go ahead and open the public hearing at this time does anybody from the public wish to speak to this item if not i'll go ahead and close the public hearing commissioners Make a motion we approve um, subdivision 21.27. Subject to the staff recommendations. Subject to staff recommendations. Uh, good motion to approve. Subject to staff recs. Do I have a second? Second. All right. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any no. Anybody opposed say that. No. No? Okay, we've got. Uh, oh, and uh, uh, just for a comment. Uh-huh. Go back to one uh, of the one that the earlier one that we had and, and it goes kind of back to the situation where you don't do for one, you're not willing to do for all. You don't start a precedent, you're not willing to carry on forever. Mm -hmm. Well, all right, I understand it's an expense to build a bridge for a sidewalk. And, and and it is, and that's part of it, and I understand that. I don't know what the alternative is, but to, to where where does that where does that stop then? When you get the next one that comes and says, well, you did this for, mm -hmm. for uh, whatever the name of the stuff, what is this, Long Branch Subdivision, and we got one that's only 50 feet shorter. 
why don't, why can't we get by without anyway that's my that's Good point my yeah. so, I agree. there you go mm -hmm. uh, um, five to two I, I'm nay as well so we got can I, I mean, five you to two convince me can I change my vote Five to three, four to three. Is that, are you allowed to do that? It's been reported. It doesn't matter. It's the same outcome either way, but five to two on that. I don't think I can do that. Um, all right. All right. Next item on the agenda is the uh, SD2128 public hearing to request Joey and Janet Langley final plot approval for Dewberry Estates, two lot minor subdivision. Right Final here. plat approval for two lot minor sub. Did I just hear myself say that? You did. Is you it did. This, this, one, this, this one, is that. that this is the one that we had to be in Hoopla about uh, yeah. the private yeah. road. What? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. This is uh, first meeting. Yes, this is uh, another one of those. Um, this is the back end of what we dealt with earlier with the fire hydrant, but instead of fire hydrant, it was a public access. So get back here I'm gonna be real quick this is a, a two lot final, final plat um, the issue that came up at that point in time was this was at the back I'll show you the the lot in question is here um, if you look at the site plan or the the plan on the left the zoning map you'll see this sits off of uh, the highway and has access through an easement um, and splitting, adding more lots. So it hit, hit a culmination where enough lots were being created. We're starting to worry about fire access. The access needed to be improved enough that a fire truck could access it safely, not get stuck. They've paved the road. Uh, Eric Cortez and myself went out, looked at this. We have geotechs approving. It will handle a loaded fire truck. Um, everything is meeting. We recommend approval without conditions. Uh, the plan that this is a follow-up of the final plat as we approved in preliminary plat so there is no installation remaining so there will need neither be a performance bond or a maintenance bond required so we this has got to be a parallel universe do you say approved without conditions without conditions this is this is uh if there's a home run this is it <laughs> <laughs> right. tell you what they went to the map to put to pave that thing to they did. They did a great job, and we really appreciate their patience. Um, you know, I don't. Okay, here. Is that, is that anybody here? I uh, really do appreciate their patience with this, but I think it, it turned out for the best. All right, thank you. Anybody from the developer wish to speak to this item? Um, anybody from the public wish to speak to this item? I'll open the public hearing. And I'll close the public hearing. Motion, Mr. Chairman, and SD 2128 Dubarry Estates, I move we approve. Second. Second. Wait, was that subject to staff recommendation? Never mind the word. No, 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 we're not going to even put that. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 We're going to put a big asterisk by that one. <laughs> all time. Everybody read, make sure we all read our, our minutes next <laughs> month. Uh, next item on the agenda is EC um, 21.07 uh, MPM Investments, LLC. We'll actually go back to SD 21.3, if you don't mind. 3-0. Three zero. Three zero. Yeah. Old Battles Village Phase 4A, final plat subdivision. I doubled it off twice. Good point. My bad. Go ahead. Excuse All right. Me. And since Hunter didn't use any conditions of approval, I might borrow one or two of his. <laughs> uh, this is a final plat approval. Um, like, as I said, for Old Battles Village, phase 4A is a 22 lot subdivision that's located on the north side of phases one and two of Old Battles Village PUD. Um, it's, has, it is a PUD, therefore has a site plan that it has to be built substantial conformance to. On the screen is the aerial on the right and the zoning map on the left. As you can see, it's tucked in between two existing phases currently. On the screen is the plat depicting the layout of the lots. Again, all built in conformance with the approved PUD. Um, just a few comments. The final plat must be recorded within 60 days after the date of final approval. Uh, stormwater comments, the stormwater system for 4A was designed to function with the existing stormwater system of phase three. Staff required a full inspection of the stormwater system. Uh, the letter I provided you was a letter uh, indicating that all, anything has been corrected, so there are no conditions of approval for that. The aerator is currently not operational. That is strictly due to the power not being connected at this time to that development. 
uh, follow-up activities required by the staff are in here so we know what to do at, after the final plat approval if it is approved to record the O&M agreements the performance bonds maintenance and guarantees and things listed on on the screen uh, staff recommends approval of SD 21.30 uh, Old Battles Village Phase 4A with the following conditions again you will see some items in red item number seven that can be eliminated uh, the report again as I said giving you was the inspection report indicating that the system is operating as designed in accordance with Fairhope subdivision regulations um, the conditions are kind of a punch list that are still left uh, some of the rain events we've had here recently has hindered the ability to stabilize and get the 90 percent growth so condition one is final stabilization of all disturbed areas with 90 percent growth verified by planning department removing the sediment accumulation on some of the sock pipes and the drainage inlets reinstall the future roof <coughs> street that was knocked down uh, there's a remaining storm hole manhole invert that needs to be grouted and smooth verified by public works department and proof that the aerator is operational and to complete the follow-up activities for the maintenance bond and guarantee agreement that was lifted, listed inside of the report like i said most of these conditions are not nothing serious nothing major just want to make sure that they are on the list to be verified one more time uh, some of those stock pipes were left in for those storm events coming in to protect any debris getting into those uh, storm limits. All right. Any questions for staff at this time? All right. So the two mind. items in red are removed or added to? I, item number seven, six and seven were added after the report. Seven is no longer valid okay. due to the report given to you. And six is to memorialize the follow up activities required after flat approval. Thank you. All right. Uh, does anybody from the developer wish to speak to this item? Okay. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Um, it has been really challenging with all of the rain, so thank you guys for being patient and allowing us to um, bring the letters in sort of today and things like that, but it has been very challenging to get inspections and final um, stabilization and things like that done, um, but it will definitely be taken care of. That's a very nice development there, it really is. It's beautiful, it really is. And this was, if you noticed on the plat, uh, Mr. Kohler, the little bump outs that were in the rights of way, those are traffic calming. Gotcha. So, yep, <laughs> traffic calming in action. <laughs> well, thank you. I would feel just to kind of stay up front on, well, I don't think anybody here is from the public is gonna, I'll go ahead and open the public hearing at this time. Does anybody wish to speak to this item? Yeah, I'll do. Yes, oh, come ahead. Could you state your name and your address, please? How are y'all? Doing, Doing great, good. thanks. Thanks for hearing me out. My name's Tony Barnett. I live at 115 Garrison Boulevard. So that's on the main, uh, in, one of the main entrance. Actually, it's probably the main entrance, and then there's another entrance off Old Battles, but it's not really the main thoroughfare or the artery. So I guess from what I, the information that I have heard is that there these are going to be lower income homes or that what is the value on these homes going to be uh, sir let me um, just one minute um, any questions you have I'll write down and I'll okay get the developer right. back I up apologize. So it's my first no, that's fine and by the way this um, subdivision has been approved and built so this is the final plot approval where our job now isn't to approve the subdivision it's to make sure that they have done what they said they've done. In other words, all the sidewalks are there, all the speed bumps are there, the ingress and egress. My apologies. Yes. I just wanted, so from what I was told that what was initially proposed was changed. So that's why I was really coming to get more clarification. Mr. Yes, Chairman, I think I can elaborate there. Yes, sir. Um, there was, uh, staff did review, and I believe there was even a community meeting for phase six of this to create smaller lots within phase six as right. approved within the PUD. Uh, that's not this, this is, uh, that would be, okay. if we see that we do not have that application. Perfect. Um, I'm good. You yeah, might have got good. that from the mainstream media. Yeah, th this, is, <laughs> this well, is already there. You know, it's one of those things where um, you want to be involved in your community, like right. you said. You that's want right. to have a voice. You want to come in here. And it's not that I want to stifle progress. Right. I just want to make sure that the neighborhood that I have 
put my hard working money into is going to be the neighborhood that they promised. So I apologize. I'm not trying to waste anyone's time. No, that's a very good question. And this is a 4A, so it's already actually there. We're so good. keep looking out for those yellow city signs and keep in touch because eventually the next phases will come before us. And so the way that it works, this has in general been, been a, you know, kind of a big concept through, you know, a number of phases have been approved in a kind of a, a concept. Sure. But each phase then comes back as a subdivision. And when the subdivision comes, you have, you know, SD2130, which is what this is. Right. And you have the preliminary plat approval. And then you have the final plat. The preliminary plat is the one that you would be interested in for the next phases because that's when they'll come in and show what they're doing. And then after that, once they get that approval, if they get that approval, then they'll build all of the improvements. And at that point, they'll come back for the final plat approval. So when you heard Mike mention, you know, some exceptions, those are items that just because of the rain and things weren't able to be able to be done by the time we vote. But it's stuff that's well within the staff's capability to say, oh, yeah, we'll, you know, make sure that, you know, those couple of items are there before we start permitting houses to be built. How soon in advance would they do something like that? The, well, the, the good news for you is you can you can follow what we do every month. We meet right. the first Monday of every month. About a week or a week and a half prior to our meeting, they will publish our agenda uh, on the city's website. So you okay. can pick that up every month and okay. find out what we're going to be doing. And, uh, and you'll see your, your own. And if you'll, we, you'll see the one that you're interested in if and when it does come up. Thanks. And, and if that would happen, we would probably see that, I would assume, as a PUD amendment. So that would actually be a zoning change before we got to a preliminary. So you would see signs on, on the properties. And um, I think, uh, be, yeah, that would be the next step. So the then one it thing would come we're in front of us and then city council. So and then city council. Two, two if if that happens, I don't know if that's going to happen or not. And you can also leave, you know, call the, you know, we're kind of in between uh, secretaries right now. But as we, you know, do get one, you could give your email because we have an email list that we send out that Perfect. involves yes. a lot okay. of owners association presidents and people like that that we just send out our agenda to, you know, a week prior. Perfect. Thank y'all for hearing right. me out. Yes, sir. Thank All you. Right. Thanks for being here. All right. Anybody else from the public who wishes to speak to this item? In that case, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing. And commissioners? Motion, Mr. Chairman. Case SD 21.30, Old Battle Village, Phase 4A. I move we approve subject staff recommendations, eliminating number seven. All right. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. All right, motion passes unanimously. Uh, now, am I proper at ZC 2107, rezone from RA to B4? Yes, sir. West side of 181. All right. And I did drive by this one today. Good afternoon. So this is... Well, wait, wait a minute. Who's taking notes now? This is kind of scary. I got it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> That's even scarier now. I don't feel any sense of comfort at all now. Hey, Mike, can you uh, get up a pen? At least act like we you're taking notes. You have it as well. Right. I don't know. That's not exactly the prettiest uh, secretary I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> this is ZC 2107 zoning change from RA to B4. This is the request of Fairhope Single Tax MPM Investments, LLC. They're requesting to rezone the property from RA to B4. This property is approximately 2.22 acres and is located on the west side of Highway 181, approximately 200 feet north of Windmill Road. Here you will see the zoning map as well as the aerial. And this is uh, the drawing of the uh, site showing frontage on Windmill Road and Highway 181. The applicant states that commercial development along Highway 181, of course, is inev inevitable. The aerial is wooded 
and does not appear to have attracted any interest in its current zoning classification. Due to its location outside of the village core, as specified in the comprehensive plan, the applicant believes that the request for B4 zoning is more appropriate and is less intensive. B4 zoning district is defined as it is intended to provide an opportunity for business establishments of a professional nature and is restricted to offices and businesses which provide specific corporate functions or professional services to, be, to the general public. And there you see the map and the subject area is right below the closest village core which is at Fairhope Avenue. So the drawing here um, just illustrates an L-shaped lot, again, with two frontages, one on Windmill and one on Highway 181. And I just have sh um, kind of illustrated the surrounding zoning districts. You have PUD, R1 to the north, R2 across Greeno Road. You have B4 to the south, and then PUD across Windmill Road to the south. Again, since 2001, the comprehensive plan has supported the village concept. Um, I, I spoke previously about the village cores and the closest one being on that Fairhope Avenue intersection. Um, the zoning ordinance states the following about RA. This district may be used for a holding zone for future development. Staff finds that because the subject property does not fall within the village center as defined by the comprehensive plan, it is more appropriate to request a lesser intensive zoning and we are in agreement with the applicant's claim um, that B4 would be more appropriate. Minimum building setbacks are illustrated on the survey that was submitted. However, according to the applicant, they are the RA setbacks. The applicant intends to revise the setbacks once the rezoning application is approved. Due to the unique shape of the subject property, staff has proposed the following. A 60-foot minimum building setback along Highway 181, a 20-foot minimum building setback along Windmill Road, 20-foot minimum building setback along the northern and western property lines, and then a 20, I'm sorry, a 10-foot minimum building setback along the interior property lines as shown on the drawing. That's our criteria for review. And staff recommends approval of case ZC 21.07, subject to the following conditions. Um, it, the submission of an administrative replat to record the setbacks as proposed by staff. All right. Thank you, Samara. Are there any questions for staff at this time? Nope. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you much. Please grab the pen away from Hunter ASAP. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, would anybody um, on behalf of the developer wish to speak to this? Yes, sir. I'm Larry Henderson. Yes, I have a uh, property to live in that's uh, subdivision adjacent to this property. Hey, our concern. Oh, uh, wait. Um, it's not the public hearing yet, sir. I'm sorry. Sir? Uh, it's not the public hearing yet that I need to let the developer speak first. And then I'll pu open the public hearing in just one second. You stay up front if you want. We'll just take a moment. Yes, sir. All right. Before I get started on the this one, it, it was a development that you were remembering with the um, gopher tortoise. Um, I think it was one of my projects, though. And so the reason they're worried about the gopher tortoise is because the eastern indigo snake lives in the gopher to tortoise's holes. They'll cohabitate. And um, so that's, that's what you were remembering. But um, I believe now the eastern indigo has been, I forget the term they use, but it's no longer in Alabama, according to the Department of Natural Extirpated, Resources. Extirpated, I think, is the that's name. It. That's it. Oh, really? Yeah. Not delisted, but gone? Out of Alabama. It's, it's still, not in Alabama any longer. Well, they say that, I think. Yeah, they, they just haven't had any recent. Yeah. Uh, it's not in Baldwin County. And the original recommendations were that part of Alabama, Washington County, Mobile County, were going to be included in the, uh, in the uh, area. Mm -hmm. But most of it's in Mississippi. Yeah. But it's not over here. Right. So that was it. And I guess while I'm giving. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, too late. Uh, um, as 
Rebecca, on the previous, the, the uh, you hear about the sidewalks to nowhere, but on that one, previous one that have nothing to do with the boardwalk to nowhere. Um, I'm, I'm a runner, so I run a lot of times, and a lot of times it's dark. If y'all know where Palladian is, there's a boardwalk going through wetlands mm -hmm. that dies in wetlands. And I was running one night, and it was oh. still our morning, and it was still dark. And so I, I would agree with your vote, so don't feel bad that you didn't get to change it, because I about had a broken leg. So, <laughs> because that, that boardwalk yeah, would have been floating in the air. Sidewalk in yeah, um, the, there would have been no way for them to tie it back based on the screenshot that I saw. So on this one, um, you know, there's not too much of a um, presentation that needs to be given. I did want to note that um, also um, across from the B4 zoning on the other side of 181 is a business use. Um, there's offices located there and then the um, east side of 181 um, this southeast corner is where billy's bacon is so that whole corner right there and the pud to the south is also professional offices so that whole area is um you know becoming an office place and so that's why we went for the b4 on this zoning we thought it was appropriate with the surrounding uses and that's all i had i think it works well the way the little water retention is right there on the windmill road between the houses and the little Yes. spur that you have works pretty nicely I think yeah and I really don't think there's enough buildable area there um, on that spur anyway so if anything it'll be an access one point. way in one way out you yeah get a lot more parking that way yeah thank you thank I'll, you Larry. if you have any other questions if you need me to design it for you when you get to that point just I've got my you pen. moonlight I'll be, gl I'll be glad to <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> like everybody else we're hiring if you <laughs> I'll be glad to <laughs> you'll have me for a day <laughs> I'll be fired. He's, right, he's um, getting his government check now for, <laughs> right. for, for COVID, so he's not he's not looking for a job. Um, I'll go ahead and open the public hearing, uh, sir. If you'd like to speak, please just state your name and your address, please, sir. This piece of property is backs up to uh, our sir, sir, so you, could, could you state your name and your address, Larry please, Henderson. Sir. Okay, thank you, sir. And uh, a resident of the area and also the president of the Property Owners Association, so I'm okay. speaking for more than one. Perfect. And our concern is not that the fact that it's going commercial. I think it, it will. If I owned it, that's what I'd be trying to do with it. But our concern is uh, this part right here, and you can't, you know, the, where the B4 is, yes, is that part of our property backs up right there as a retention pond. Of yes, course, sir. this going in there could, could and more than likely will increase our liability. And uh, we're concerned about whether we're going to get a buffer there. there. Now, we did get a notice on this piece of property. We did not get a notice or let me say, I don't recall getting a notice on the piece of property B4, which was recently changed uh, and is under construction or has construction going on that lot now as a commercial piece of property. Okay. Uh, and so we've got that 30 foot buffer that goes out to. Uh, Old Mill Road, old Windmill Road, and uh, we don't have any buffer. We, we would like to express our concern in the buffer there and along the property line all the way up. Hunter, let me ask staff at this. What is the buffer required? There's a buffer that's required between commercial and residential in our ordinance for B4. What is the... I buffer. believe that's uh, 20 feet. I'd have to confirm with that. But since we're re re um, recording the replat for the set setbacks, I believe that's 20 foot on that side, correct, Ms. Mayor? Or is that 10 foot? Um, we, we could 20. add that. Is it 10 on that side? Okay. So, okay. Yeah, and then that's the... We can, we, I didn't hear a word he said. When, when a business development is next to residential, there is a buffer required. Staff is recommending 20 feet from what's the matter. That's setbacks. 
so it's shown down. there. So but that's, yeah, not that's, that's, that's not a buffer. That's not a buffer. Ten foot with a fence, um, and I believe there's some landscape. There's a few options for what how you can uh, what, create what that. What kind buffer. of buffer would be required? Ten, ten foot um, a fence and ten foot. I believe there's some options for some it. landscape. Uh, landscape. So there will there won't be anything built within the twenty foot buildings built within twenty foot of that property line, um, and there will be a buffer with at least a fence um, in between the two uses. Ten foot fence. Uh, a, a, a fence. I believe that's eight foot. Eight foot. Uh, eight foot fence. You don't know. Eight, eight foot. Eight. 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 Yep. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you, then. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right. Anybody else wish to speak to this item? Uh, in that case, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing at this point. And uh, remember that we just make a recommendation to the city council who will eventually uh, make the decision on this since this would be, in fact, a, a uh, zoning. Commissioners? I make a motion for ZC 2107 rezone from RA to V4 that we make a recommendation to City Council to approve this application. Oh. And on top of that, I think V4 certainly would be logical in this particular. All right. Got a motion to recommend staff, approval. Staff recommendations. Uh, yes. yes. With staff recommendations. With staff recommendations. Yes. All right. Do I have a second? Second. I'm going to have a motion and a second to recommend uh, approval to the City Council subject to staff recommendations. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. All right, motion passes unanimously. Um, ZC 21.09, public hearing to consider the request of the City of Fairhope Planning and Zoning Department for an amendment to the Central Business District to allow short-term rentals. Thank you. We're going to set another record here. One sentence amendment we discussed last month to the CBD to amend the, the CBD section to allow short-term rentals anywhere within the CBD. That language was added in a very simple sentence um, under the, I believe that is Article 5. Don't quote me on that, but it's CBD section um, B and, and subsection 3 uses. We've added A, which reads, short-term rentals shall be allowed within the CBD, regardless of the underlying zoning district. This is um, was brought up be, due to a couple of our um, rezoning requests in the CBD to B2 last month uh, that were tabled, and this was, the, I thought, uh, a better solution. So this, this makes uh, some that already are operating. B4 is really the only only zoning district within CBD except for a couple of our quirky R2s uh, or R1s uh, that will allow short-term rentals. So if there's any questions, that's 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 the gist of my presentation. Yeah, and this is kind of along your lines, art of what you do for one, you do for the others. This is one where there was nothing on before and just traditionally some people had some and now it's like, well, what do you do, you know? <laughs> so it makes sense. Yeah. Um, so this anyway. is a recommendation to the city council. Again, uh, uh, being a zoning the, amendment. Benefits of CBD. I mean, that's, that's uh, certainly. Yeah. yeah. All right. Any questions, concerns? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I, I, I move we uh, recommend to the city council to approve the change to the subdivision regulation. Before, before. Zoning ordinance. Zoning ordinance. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Yes, sir. Second. Right. I have a motion and second. Any further? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. All right. Any further? And I'd just like to go on the record say I thought our meeting went great, our lunch meeting, and I hope we'll do those every few yes. quarters and just kind of air stuff out. It certainly is good team building, I think, of nothing I else. That, I, I agree with you. I thought it was good. I think it's something, I, may, I don't know if we need to do it every month, but at least every couple once months. Once a quarter. I think so. I agree. And I think Art and Lee should buy lunch every time. I don't disagree with that. If you fried chicken next time, send me some business and I'll buy lunch. Really Popeyes. Um, I think it would be neat to have one of those and invite specifically some of the engineers to maybe kind of give us some feedback and some yeah. info on, you know, what they That's think. Because, you know, Rebecca was making a couple of comments of, 
you know, how do they do it here? How do they do it there? Um, do they do it better than us? Which obviously nobody does, but right. every now and then we might want to. There might be some idea. Might be some it. idea we could use. Uh, yeah. well, I think maybe invite some engineers and get them to kind of give us some ideas this way and that. I think it's a great idea. Uh, do I have a motion? But you'd have to have some kind of a, I mean, you'd have to kind of give them some idea of what it, we'd be looking for. I mean, instead of just inviting You're them talking prep work now. I they mean, come I over there and just like stuff it. their faces and get up and leave. I mean, you no, know. I think we just, yeah, I think we give them some, you know, a little sheet, kind of, how do yeah. you think we do on dates, criteria, reviews, mm -hmm. um, you know, what are your biggest gripes about our comprehensive plan, about our subdivision regs, you know, some things oh, like that. Well, well, and asking them, instead of just like what's wrong, but just have you seen this done better somewhere else? Yeah. yeah would exactly. you, you know, have you seen a better example? What about the comprehensive plan? What, is there a plan yet? So Not a plan, but I mean, is there a game plan? There, there were two, um, two pieces to that puzzle. The the GIS portion has completely been approved. Uh, we are getting ready to kick that off. The comp plan, I believe, was approved at council. We're waiting, so, waiting for um, funding, maybe ADC and R, or you know, somewhere in the. That takes a while. In the in the. Okay. Grass. How do you pick? Who who will draft? Who will be responsible for drafting? The comprehensive plan. A, a group was uh, selected. The selection committee for all of the restore projects were was compiled, and that group reviewed everyone that bid on or sent in an RFQ for that project. Um, I don't think we're at the point where that recommendation is public. I don't know that, so I'd, I'd like to. Do, do you sit? Because it you has get to be approved. The, you get by Restore Act approves approves the expenditure for the development of new comprehensive plan, and, and the, the money associated with it. Correct, Jimmy. I, mi I missed the second part of that. It, did, did, did Restore Act approve the, the funding for the funding for a new comprehensive plan? Is it the yes. City Council's responsibility to send out requests for proposals? They've already done that. that was, already that's been done, and actually that was have, a committee on this It was this a committee one. that included staff and public and works. Some, some and it was How many responses did you get? Well, we actually had to, it, it would be done. We actually had to do it again for a, um, whether it was a process change or not getting uh, anyone in. I can't remember the details, but we wound up with, I believe, five that met the criteria? Five? Um, yes, sir. Five groups. Were there any local? We had good groups. Any local? Yes, sir. Or okay. in the past, the Planning and Zoning Commission has chosen the engineers to do the comprehensive plans the last two goes. Yeah. Really? This, well, the, was, uh, this was a the unique one. The, last, the, the one that I'm thinking about for the, for the village centers and all that, so when I got from Don Arkansas Curtis. or something right. like that. Missouri. Missouri. Yeah. What, so what this was the change. Was it because it was Restore Act? That, that absolutely. Okay. Um, the because the this is state source. guidelines and Fed guidelines administered by yeah. ADC and R. There is a process for every Restore Act. So I get it. Yeah, when it's local, state, and federal, you get all the red tape. Yeah. <laughs> so we um, and, and the selection committee for all Restore projects was the same. Uh, so that that was kind of a, a quirkiness that with this when the way we, we were funded um, for the selection committee but and restore is only involved so far as the funding once we get the green they light on this approved they approve the projects and and then I think once well but yeah they approved approve. the funding of it through what we submitted to hey we want to do this they say yes and okay we approve that funding amount and then we get to pick the and who who with the city is going to be responsible for picking the group to do the comprehensive plan that we've already Sorry, went through the reviews on everyone mm -hmm. that's the selection committee and that has that recommendation has been made and what is some of the part of that bureaucracy right now ADCNR is checking in to make sure we pick some you know that that whole process was met and we hope to hear, uh, hear back very soon that 
that everything is good and we got the green light and we actually will be getting started. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll look forward to when I can, you know, let Publicly all that know. Yeah. And in other words, you got. I, I'm sorry, I'm a little slow here, but uh, you got five. He's picked. You got five he knows proposals who is, who is and, and, yeah. and, and you've already selected and the one. Ready to make sure the well, actually, I don't. The um, you know, we we do independent reviews. It's there's there's a lot of guidelines on how you do restore projects and your selection committee works. So there's actually. Uh, a blind review we have a score sheet their scores calculated and tallied oh, and so you don't those, even know um you know. not not um <laughs> it, it all gets compiled and, okay. and we have other folks that are kind of doing those things you know so okay uh we, we'll i'm asking because i've I, i'm involved with restore from from natural resources so conservation service me. and it's a flipping nightmare yeah yeah, I agree. <laughs> well, but you know, we're 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 part of the the bureaucracy. So yeah, let's go and close the meeting. And let's do that. Talk about it. Yeah, that's fine. I'll right. move we close <laughs> the meeting. Let's see. Aye. Uh, Aye. Aye. Seven forty-two. Yeah. So.